meeting please come to order. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Reverend Kelly Miller Smith, First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill, the guest of Council Member Freddie O'Connell. Pray. Gracious and eternal God, again, we are so grateful for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. The opportunity for us to share in this place and in this space where there are great minds that have gathered here in order to address the matters that are important to this city and to this area. We're so grateful for these persons who have dedicated their lives to make sure Nashville becomes an even greater place than what it has been. As it has worked its way through many years of challenges and, and celebrations, but yet it is still at this point that we find ourselves on the crest of even greater days ahead. We pray for each person who's a part of this council, Lord, that, that uh, their actions and their thoughts and their deeds will be not simply for those who are part of their own area and their own districts and their own constituents, but that they understand or are reminded of the fact that it is for the whole city, for all persons, regardless of what uh, their yoke, what their walk of life may be. We ask, Lord, also, that we'll always be mindful, not only of those persons who are the affluent, those persons who have political power and sway, but that we also are considered of those who are the least of these, those persons who have challenges, those persons who don't have um, the, child, the, the opportunity to have people to represent them in very specific kinds of ways, but that we're, remind, that we're mindful of that, that we're mindful of those persons who uh, are going to schools and our public schools here, that we will be sensitive to the things that are necessary to make sure that there's a budget that is uh, appropriate for them to learn and to study and to grow and to mature. For others who are homeless and others who have other kinds of issues, that we will make sure that we always are concerned, even for the least of these. We ask, Lord, that you will grant your grace upon all who have gathered here. And in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. You may be seated. Without objection, we'll suspend with the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Madam President, there are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. We're now going to move to elections and confirmations. Council Lady Haywood. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, the rules, confirmation, and public elections consider the following boards and commissions. We started with the Employee Benefit Board, and we have the reappointment of Dr. Christine Bradley for a term expiring June the 30th of 2021. Uh, we took it to vote, and we voted eight in favor of and zero against. So I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Dr. Christine Bradley to the Employee Benefit Board. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Yes, next we have the Farmers Market Board. We have the reappointment of Mr. Tandy Wilson for a term expiring May the 17th of 2023. After voting, we voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Tandy Wilson to the Farmers Market Board. All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the Fire and Building Coals Appeals Board. We have the reappointment of Mr. John Finch for a term expiring March the 1st of 2022. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You have heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. John Finch to the Fire and Building Coals Appeal Board. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the hospital, the hospital authority, and we have the appointment of Dr. Loretta Bond for a term expiring July the 11th of 2019. Dr. Bond will fill the unexpired term of Dr. Frida Outlaw, and I move for confirmation after voting eight for and zero against. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Dr. Loretta Bond to the hospital authority. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the appointment of Dr. Shadana Fagan for a term expiring July the 11th of 2021. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and she will fulfill the unexpired term of Dr. Michelle Williams, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Dr. Shadana Fagan's to the hospital authority. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the appointment of Ms. Alexandria Fisher for a term expiring September the 6th, 2021. Ms. Fisher will fill the unexpired term of Mr. Harry Allen. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Alexandria Scarborough Fisher to the hospital authority. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the reappointment of Mr. Joel Sullivan for a term expiring July the 11th of 2023. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of the reappointment <coughs> of Mr. Joel Sullivan to the hospital authority. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Last but certainly not least, we have the Tourism and Convention Commission. And we have the reappointment of Mr. Fletcher Foster for a term expiring June the 30th of 2021. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you, you've heard the motion for confirmation of reappointment of Mr. Fletcher Foster to the Tourism and Convention Commission. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the reappointment of Ms. Lisa McClare for a term expiring June the 30th of 2021. We voted eight in favor of and zero against, and I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Lisa McClare to the Tourism and Convention Commission. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. Next, we have the reappointment of Mr. Hank Lachlan for a term expiring June the 30th of 2021. We voted eight in favor of and no votes against this young man. Thank you. I move for confirmation. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Hank Lachlan to the Tourism and Convention Commission. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Council Lady Haywood. I think we're done. All righty, so please, if you would, stand as I call your name. Dr. Christine Bradley for the Employee Benefit Board, Mr. Tandy Wilson, Farmers Market Board, Mr. John Finch, Fire and Building Codes Appeals Board, Hospital Authority as follows, Dr. Loretta Bond, Dr. Shindana Fagans, Ms. Alexandria Scarborough Fisher, Mr. Joel Sullivan, and for the Tourism and Convention Commission, Mr. Fletcher Foster, Ms. Lisa LeClaire, and Mr. Hank Lachlan. On behalf of the entire Metro Council in Nashville, we thank you for your willingness to serve and volunteer your time and expertise. Thank you. Okay, if I can call your attention again, I've got just a couple of announcements I'd like to share before we move on. First of all, we want to send well wishes to Council Member Hastings, who had some minor surgery yesterday. He won't be with us today, but we wish him Godspeed, and I think he's watching, so everybody wave to Councilman Hastings. Um, that's pretty funny. Um, we would also like to wish a happy 40th birthday to Councilman Potts, who celebrated on Saturday. Oh. 
and of great importance, and I know we're all looking forward to the time when we have this seat filled, uh, Council Member Elect Jonathan Hall, would you please stand and let us welcome you aboard. I'd like to remind the public that we have, I'm sorry. Well, then let's say happy birthday to Councilman Glover tomorrow. He's 84. <laughs> wow, 4th of July? Yeah, 4th of July, that's right. So um, I want to remind the public that we have our public comment period starting at the next council meeting on July 17th. You can sign up at nashville.gov forward slash Metro Council, or you can call 662, I'm sorry, 615-862-6780. We are now going to move to public hearings. So we're happy to hear from the public on public hearings. What we do ask is that you share your name and your address. And when you come up to the lectern to speak, we ask that you try not to repeat what other people have said. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Resolution RS 2018-1266, sponsored Council Member Karen Johnson, exempts Los Churrascos, located at 2500 Murfreesboro Pike from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Lady Johnson. Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to open the pub, well, yes, let me see. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, we have a committee report, so we're gonna call. Committee report. On, we're gonna call on Council Member Pridemore for the committee report. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Public safety, beer, and regulatory beverages approved 440 against. Thank you, Council Eddie Johnson. Thank you, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Would anyone in opposition please raise your hand? Seeing none on either side, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Eddie Johnson. I'd like to move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, I'm gonna move RS 2018-1267 to the heel. We'll move to bills on public hearing, BL 2018-1168. Council Lady Haywood. Changing 3.06 acres from IWD to MUG zoning for property located at 261 French Landing Drive. Council Lady Haywood. Yes, I would like to call for the public hearing to be opened. Anyone in favor, please raise your hand. Is there anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Haywood. Uh, by the request of uh, Councilman Hastings, he would like to defer this indefinitely. There's a motion to defer indefinitely. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1169, Council Member Pulley amends 2.08 acres of a specific plan for property located at 2209 Abbott Martin Road to permit multifamily residential and various non-residential units. Uses, I'm sorry. Councilman Pulley. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Thank you. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Anyone in opposition please raise your hand? Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Pulley. I move approval. Having been Oh, we have a comment. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Madam President. I just need to recuse myself on this vote. Thank you. Okay, no more speakers in the queue. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. We are on BL 2018-1170. Sponsor Council Lady Lee changes 6.03 acres from AR 2A to SP zoning for property located at 12452 Old Hickory Boulevard to permit up to 53 multi-family multi, resident, multi residential dwelling units. Council Lady Lee. I would like to move to defer this one meeting if that takes it to the August public hearing with a slight um, explanation. 
floor is yours. Um, we have had a public meeting on this, uh, but we need to have another one because we only had a couple of folks to come. So uh, we want to have a public meeting to give the folks um, a chance to have some conversation about this, and then we will bring it back. Thank you. And having been properly moved and seconded, anyone, please raise your hand if you're in favor. All opposed? Motion passes. Sorry, y'all. Thank you. Let's do that one more time so I can do it right this time. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. There's a lot going on up here. BL 2018-1182, sponsor Karen Johnson, disapproved by the Planning Commission 5-1 on 3-22-2018. Changes 1.22 acres from R10 to OL zoning for property located at 355 Bell Road. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Vice Mayor, I'd like to open a public hearing. We need to get slides from the Planning Department first. This is a request to rezone property from R10 to OL. Planning Commission recommendation is to disapprove. The existing zoning is R10, which is residential one and two family. The requested zoning is office limited. The applicant originally requested a rezoning to OR20 with a plan amendment. The plan amendment um, was withdrawn after a public hearing was held. Staff would not have been in support of the re requested plan amendment. The applicant withdrew and modified the request to OL. The land use policy for the area is T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance. The property is within a larger area of neighborhood maintenance policy. This is a residential only policy. The requested zoning would permit office uses, which is inconsistent with the policy. The neighborhood maintenance is intended to maintain the general character of residential neighborhoods and non-residential use has the potential to disrupt the existing character. Therefore, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval. Thank you. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you. I'd like to open a public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Johnson. You went a little bit too fast. They do want to speak. That's great. <laughs> Come on up, line up to, at the lectern. Please share with us your name and your address. My name is Harold White, and Madam Vice Mayor and Council Members, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak. I have been here 11 years ago as a councilman, and I sat where most of you sat here tonight. So I appreciate you listening to me. I promise to be short. I'm here to speak for Bill 1182 for two or three reasons, and I think are very good reasons. Number one, he's my income tax man and has been for 40 years, and he's really been good to me. The main thing is, is that <clears throat> his business, the Income Tax Center, is located on Bell Road. He bought a piece of property 325 feet from where he's at now, a home, and he wants to move his business there. And the biggest reason for moving his business there is for safety, security, and parking. He's in a little strip mall now where there have been several robberies, a person found dead out in the car. His employees fear for their safety. They won't work at nights anymore and don't work weekends. He's fearful for his clients sometimes that come and go afternoon and night. And he bought this piece of property right down the street as I said, 320 feet from where the commercial line ends. And we think it would be much, much better for the community. Uh, he had a community meeting, Ms. Johnson did. Approximately 30, 35 people attended the meeting. 20 people voted in favor of it, and only three voted against it. And so we would like to ask the council members to take into consideration for the safety, for his business. He's been in business, as I know, 40 years because he's been my tax man that long. But uh, we've talked with the neighbors on both sides of where the house is, the neighbors on the right and left, and they have no problem and are not objectionable 
to the Income Tax Center moving in there. Uh, as I said, the three people that we know that voted at the meeting against it, we believe that they had great convictions. They thought that there was a possibility of a high-rise apartment house coming in there. And that's not the case at all. And there's nothing going to be done to that house. There's not going to be any construction. There's not going to be anything except to make it for his office and pay, make a parking lot for it and make a safer environment for his clients and his employees. And I thank you for listening. Thank you. Council Eddie Johnson, you have more? If you would, if you would want to speak, if you'll just line up at the lectern. There's anybody else? Thank you. My name is Billy King. I'm the owner of the Income Tax Center. I cannot add too much more to what Harold said. And I thank everyone for listening to our request to change to professional use of 355 Bell Road. Every time we had contact with the planning uh, department, we had uh, the word embedded. The planning department kept using embedded. So we looked up the word. Embedded look uh, means to fix an object firmly and deeply in a surrounding mass. This property is not in a surrounding mass. It's on a major commuter street and 320 sp uh, spaces from a commercial area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue and no one else lined up to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I uh, would like to move for approval with a brief explanation. And I would like to also submit these pictures into the record for the clerk for everyone Thank you. to view. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I held a community meeting, um, as was mentioned. And uh, the residents in the area are in support of this 40 plus business, 40 plus year business in our area. One of the unique aspects of this um, area, which I tried to express at the Planning Commission, is that everything across the street from this property is OL. You have a daycare that's immediately across the street. You also have a church which is Bell Road Church of the Nazarene, immediately cat a corner to this property across the street is an insurance company and another daycare and other commercial businesses. But those all, the, the daycare, the, um, the repo business, the insurance company, all are OL. Uh, this particular piece of property does not sit within a residential community, as you all know. I am one person here that does not believe in intrusiveness into a residential area. This is on a main road, Bell Road, and the, the property next to this home is empty. It's just power lines and empty trees where you can't build on it. Um, to the other side is one neighbor, and he is in full agreement and support of this property, which is the dead end property uh, next to his. His property actually uh, fronts Rural Hill Road and not Bell Road, the one that's right next to this one. So this is primarily the only property along that stretch that sits there by itself as a residential property. There is no residential properties on the other side. So with that, uh, many of the neighbors feel this would provide a better environment for this business, it will be comparable to the other businesses across the street um, and also adjacent further down. Like he said, it was 300 feet from this particular area. So it's within a zone that already has a lot of commercial and office limited um, activity. So with that, if anyone has any questions by the time this gets to third reading, I would um, be very open into helping you uh, understand the dynamics of why this uh, needs to be approved for the income tax center. Uh, but the, the pictures that are provided also show clearly the other properties within vicinity of this area. And I hope that you will um, support me and the community in allowing this zone change. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor. 
Opposed? Motion passes. We're going to go back and catch up on this resolution, RS 2018-1267. Councilman Glover referred to public safety beer and regulated beverages, exempts Pelican and Pig located at 1010 Gallatin Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I, uh, public Safety Beer and Regulatory Beverages voted for, in favor four, four and zero against. Thank you. Councilman Glover. I move to open the public hearing, please. Would anyone in favor please raise their hand? Thank you. Would anyone in opposition please raise your hand? Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Glover. Move approval. Second. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We are now back on BL 2018-1183. Councilman Freeman, refer to the Planning Commission, amends the Metro Code to add conditions to the uses of automobile repair and used automobile sales. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I've got a meeting with the uh, Planning Department next week, so we would like to push this, uh, defer this to the first meeting in October, first for the public hearing for that. Okay, there is a motion to defer this to the first meeting in October, having been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1195, Councilman Kendall, approved with conditions, changes 1.96 acres from IR and RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1003, 1011, 1013, and 1013 B. 44th Avenue North and 44th Avenue North unnumbered to permit a maximum of 37 multifamily residential units. Councilman Kendall. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Uh, do we have committee reports on that? No, they're all in. They're all in. Okay, I'd like to open the uh, public hearing. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. Would anyone in opposition please raise your hand? I see you. So would anyone in opposition please like to come up to the lectern and share with us? I will take in favor first. I'm sorry, I always do that backwards. Anyone in favor would like to speak, please line up at the lectern and be sure to state your name and your address if you don't mind. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Jeff Hines with Catalyst Design Group, 5016 Centennial Boulevard. Uh, this proposal for SP zoning basically has 37 townhomes, nine of which meet the requirements for workforce housing. Um, this is currently an aging industrial laundry property. Uh, there are no residents being displaced by this proposal. Uh, it is all industrial property, and this use would serve as a transition from single-family homes to the east of 44th Avenue to industrial uses to the west of the property and to the north and railroad tracks to the, to the south of the property. Um, Planning Commission voted unanimously on this. We had three public hearings and a petition of support was circulated with 28 names uh, in favor on that petition. So we ask for your support of it this evening. Thank you. Vice Mayor, members of the council, I'm Jim Murphy at Bradley A. Rant Bolt Cummings, 1600 Division Street. Uh, I represent Red Seal Development, the developer of this project. As Mr. Uh, Hines mentioned, we've had multiple community meetings at the request of Council Member Kendall. Uh, we had a petition signed by 28 people in support of this uh, project. We had uh, we had Corey Hammonds, uh, the Hammonds Group, go out and canvass the neighborhood and uh, find out where the people that were living immediately nearby, whether they were in support and opposition. That's where we got the 28 names on the petitions. And also at, an, at the large neighborhood meeting we had in September. Um, as Mr. Hines mentioned, this includes workforce housing at the request of Councilman Kendall. Uh, this, project, this property is uh, consistent with Nashville Next. Nashville Next calls for this area to be neighborhood evolving. Um, and so uh, multifamily uh, as a transition between the industrial 
and uh, single family residence to the, to the east uh, is appropriate. And so we would request that you approve this SP. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor wishing to speak? Okay. Anyone in opposition wish to come up and speak? Please share with us your name and your address. Good evening. My name is Eldridge Arani Simmons. I reside at 912 43rd Avenue North in Nashville, Tennessee, just one block away from this project. Um, I just want to put it down for the fact that I oppose it because of the fact that this neighborhood was a small middle class neighborhood association. And we are aging out now at this point. With these homes that's going to be built, our property taxes will be increased, gentrification of our neighborhood will take place. And I look across the tracks at the nations now, compared to as I was growing up in this neighborhood, the nations has totally changed. The property taxes over there, three or $400,000 homes, the people that was actually living there can't afford to live there anymore. And I don't want to be pushed out of my neighborhood just because someone comes in and build 37 townhomes and say that they're workforce homes. Some of them will be workforce homes. I can't afford to pay two or $300,000 for a home. I can't afford to move to another area because of the cost of my house and the property value in Nashville, Tennessee. So that's why I'm opposing. Thank you. Seeing no one else lined up at the lectern, no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Kendall. Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, as, as you've heard, we had several meetings on this at my request. Uh, this property is located off of Centennial Boulevard. I don't know how many are familiar with the old, we used to call it when I was a kid, the stinky gym up on top of the hill. The old fertilizer, what it was. But it's located near that uh, between 51st and Tennessee State property there. It's, uh, as, as, as the gentleman said, it's basically industrial property. Uh, there's some industrial development north of it, but this is vacant property. Uh, we had several meetings. Uh, the consensus, uh, and Mr. Simmons and I are good friends, by the way, and we talked about this, and I understand his concern about gentrification. That's a big issue in my district because people believe, for whatever reason, that if you have the new housing, especially the work, the marketplace housing, is going to displace people. I don't particularly agree, agree with that concept. But in this particular instance, I requested of the developers that they do some workforce housing. And I really only requested about 10%, and it turns out that they're going to do about 25% in, in this development. So I, I'm, I'm certainly in support of it. I don't think it uh, opens the door to the kinds of things that Mr. Simmons seems to be afraid of, the, the tax increase and all. My district had the highest, second highest, I think valuation increase in the city, uh, even beyond what he was talking about, uh, the nations, who, which has a lot of new development. But, but I, I support this, and I hope you will vote for it. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1197, Councilman Cooper and Allen approves the plans for a construction and demolition solid waste processing facility at 4648 Ashland City Highway. Councilman John Cooper. Um, thank you, um, Madam Chairman. And uh, with a quick personal comment, I just want to say how much I am looking forward to working with District 1's new Councilman Jonathan Hall. Um, the timetable, this, this bill is brought before us as we're going to hand over the sponsorship or the stewardship of this legislation going forward. The timetable of the Jackson Law requires a decision by the county's legislative body in a month. So to make that happen, um, we've had to move ahead with this timetable. Um, and with him, with Jonathan taking his seat in a few days, we're going to try to meet that timetable and have a community meetings uh, before the third reading with the community, the applicant, and our wonderful new councilman meeting together before he takes his seat at our next meeting. Um, with that, Madam Chairman, I would move to open the public hearing. We're going to get a quick committee oh, report quick. first. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommended approval as amended. Uh, eight in favor, zero against. 
Thank you. Councilman Cooper. Move to open the public hearing. Anyone in favor, please raise your hand. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Please line up at the lectern. State your name and address for us, please. I'm Barry Sulkin, 4443 Pecan Valley Road. Uh, first of all, it was listed as a construction demolition landfill, but it's actually not. It is a food processing facility to turn food waste into compost. I uh, live in the Bells Bend area. We have a community organization called the Bells Bend Conservation Corridor. I happen to be the vice president of that. And we met uh, last week, the steering, the uh, executive committee met. Everyone was in favor of it. Our full board won't have time to meet. It doesn't meet till late this month. But this is in concert with our agricultural projects in the area. It is not a landfill, and we support it. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Line up at the lectern. Share your name and address, please. Uh, David Wells at 3460 Knight Drive, uh, Whites Creek, Tennessee. Um, I'm a local farmer here in Nashville. Um, I'm for this uh, biodigester. I think it would be a great addition to the farming community in the District 1 and District 2 areas of town. Um, it's going to uh, significantly help our uh, economy and um, build a, a resilient Nashville. So I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you. Um, uh, there is a uh, substitute in order to clarify the language. This project was inaccurately identified due to some Jackson Law technicalities as a landfill, and in real reality, it's a recovered materials recycling site. There's some discussion whether the Jackson Law even applies to this, but in an abundance of caution, TDEC and uh, our Public Works Department felt that we should go ahead and comply with the Jackson Law in this case. Um, so with that, Madam Chairman, I move the substitute, and then I believe there's a friendly amendment with from Council Lady Allen. So is there a second on the substitute? Having been properly moved and seconded, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, ask uh, to suspend the rules to file a late file amendment. Is there any objection to a suspension of the rules? Seeing none, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, this is simply an amendment to add a few more recitals um, that spell out very clearly that um, this food digesting facility is part of, or a very, very important potential solution to Metro's zero waste solid waste master plan, which is gonna be introduced very soon. Um, and it's an integral piece of that. Um, and that spells out that it is, um, it, it can produce energy, it can um, reduce the amount of landfill solid waste that goes to the landfill, and that just uh, to, to specifically spell out those beneficial aspects, I think it's important to have as part of this. And with that, I would renew my motion. Thank you. Is there a second to her motion to amend? Having been properly moved and seconded, Council Lady Gilmore, do you want to speak on the amendment? Okay, hang on. Go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. So I had a question, I have maybe two questions, but I just want to understand um, if there has not been a community meeting, um, why is this being um, pa passed for? I'm trying to understand the nature of why this is being pushed forward without a community meeting and we're having a public hearing. Councilman well, Cooper. Yeah, no, great, great question. Um, part of it is um, the requirements of the Jackson Law to have all this done in a month and then the new district councilman has only been elected last Thursday and will be, um, in effect, certified in just a few days. So with a new councilman uh, and the applicant and the community, there's the expectation of having these community meetings before third reading when he will be here with us, conducted by him for the first time. We've only known about him for a couple of days. Uh, the reason for going ahead with this is that there are a lot of grants, particularly from TDEC itself, uh, that we risk by not having a location for this, uh, uh, creating a timetable to have it done in 30 days. I'm looking at our council here, and so that timetable has required this somewhat, it's not a suspension of the rules, but it's a work around the rules of having a community meeting in effect last on this process, but well before he takes a seat in third reading. And I believe there's also a, committee, a community meeting already scheduled 
Yeah, the, I guess the, the only concern I have, where are we in, in terms of the days? Where are we now? Councilman, J I mean, Councilman. Mr. Jamison. The uh, Jackson Law, the state legislation, welding that to our ordinance uh, procedure was not perfect, but the state legislation, it's 6811704A, it specifies that 30 days after the public hearing, the legislative body has to either make its final motion to approve or disapprove, and that clock starts ticking today. So today is day one. The problem is that 30 days out, we only have one council meeting that fits in that window. That'll be the meeting on July 17th. The first meeting we have in August is too late. So I, was, I wanted to see if we could refer and re-refer. I guess the only concern was I did listen to the persons from public hearing, and I'm glad we have it and that we're you know uh, listening, but they were from, one was from Bells Bend, and I think another one was from another area, and they were not close to that Ashland City. I mean, what, I just think that there are other people that are close to the Ashland City Highway, and I do think that there needs to be community input, and I think when persons are advocates, uh, they're usually more informed than just the regular constituency. So I, I think it would be appropriate to have a, you know, if you have a public hearing, then more people could come out and participate. I just don't know if we are kind of circumventing the process, and I don't want to hold anything up, but I do think if you haven't had a community meeting, but you have a public hearing, I don't know what that does to the process, and then we have community advocates to come out versus constituents if they would like to come out. So a, a deferral would be fatal to this. You'd have to start all over and understand the TDEC grants would have expired by then. What you could do is not just re-refer to uh, the committee if you wanted to do that, but with two-thirds body approval on third reading, you could conduct a public hearing, just as we're doing tonight. Well, I would like to do that. I think in all fairness to the community, that would be appropriate. Without, it would still give uh, the council member, and I do appreciate his hard work, and I realize he's at large and he's taken on another district, but I do think in fairness of the com community and giving everyone the opportunity to participate, that there should be an opportunity for them to come to a public hearing, and that's why we have them. Well, we are having a public hearing tonight. But it hasn't been a community meeting. There has not been a community so meeting. So I don't know what that does. Which I mean, is scheduled, and I think um, re-referring it back to the Public Works Committee on third reading is, uh, correct me, Mr. Jamison, I think that's appropriate. But ultimately, um, he, on his capable shoulders, the new District 1 councilman on this falls at third reading next time, whether he feels that there's been enough community engagement and whether he's heard any concerns from the community. Well, I just think we're, we're pushing it forward now. And without a public um, meeting and to have a public hearing and to expect uh, us council members to vote on it, I don't know how, you know, fair that is. And I, like I said, I would not defer it, but I do think it needs to be a community meeting before a public hearing. Councilman Cooper. Um, well, I, again, I'm, I, I do feel that on Councilman Hall's shoulders in terms of deferring it on third reading if he feels that in, in any way that he's not satisfied with the community engagement, that he can make that call at that, at that time. I would like to make one more. I think we're setting a new precedent to have a public hearing without a community meeting. And so I would just like to ask that we, I don't mind, we, we, on third, I think we're setting a new precedent if we do this to have a public hearing without a community meeting. And so I would ask, um, I would move now if the, the, the uh, council doesn't want to vote on it, but I just think we are starting a new precedent. I would move that we refer it to uh, the third reading to have a public hearing. I can't hear you. We are on amendment. Yeah, we're on Council Lady Allen's amendment. So, Councilman Glover, you had something you wanted to say? Is it on the amendment? Yes. Actually, Mr. Jamison, tell us the dollars that, that could be at jeopardy if we, if we don't meet the timeline. Because, frankly, I don't really understand that piece of it, but obviously there, there's portions of it. And, and I'll say, I mean, I, I've actually done one where I had a public hearing where we weren't able to do a community meeting. We did it before we had third reading and with the, with the option of if I needed to defer at that point. So, I mean, he, he unfortunately is kind of caught in the middle here. And so I would, I, I just want to make sure we don't 
mess him up on something that he's in support of. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and vote on the amendment, then we're going to vote on the substitute as amended, then we'll vote on the bill as substituted. Okay, so we'll still have time for conversation. We'll be able to entertain your motion, but we want to make sure that we get this in an organized manner. So, Council Lady Gilmore, do you have a comment, because I see your button pushed, do you have a comment on the amendment from Council Lady No, I think Allen? the amendments are great, but I'd like to offer up my motion after okay. we vote on the amendment, just well, to be let's, clear. Let's take care of this amendment first. Council Lady Bircher, do you wish to speak on the amendment? Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam President. Um, can, can we have the sponsor of the friendly amendment um, just, uh, just articulate to us what this friendly amendment does um, in relation to um, Councilman Cooper's um, initial uh, legislation? Council Lady Allen. Yes, thank you for that opportunity. Again, this is, um, the bill itself is, um, is, speaks mainly to why we are having the public hearing and why what this um, facility will do is not spelled out very, very um, specifically in the initial parts of the bill. And I feel that that's very important because I am very interested in recycling and garbage and I've been following this for six years. Um, and I know how hard the, uh, the, the owner has worked on this amazing public-private partnership to bring a facility to Nashville that will take us another long period of years to bring if, if this doesn't end up being successful. So my friendly amendment simply explains that this is a food waste processing plant, that it um, produces compost, which can be used by the neighboring community, produces energy, um, and that it has a lot of benefits and that it supports Metro Nashville's zero waste solid waste master plan. And I, I just felt like those are important things to be mentioned um, just as an explanation for years from now when we look back and say, what was this about? It doesn't, it doesn't change any of the process that he does. It's simply a little bit more explanation of, of the benefits of why this is a great thing for Nashville. Thank you. Council Lady Lee, did you have a comment about the amendment? Actually, I have a point of order, I think. Uh, I would like to ask that before we vote, if you would read each one exactly that what we're voting on. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, right now we are on the amendment. And Councilman, I did it again. Mr. Jameson, would you please read the amendment? I don't have the amendment. It's a late file. So it's gonna... Bear with us a minute. The, uh, there's a substitute and an amendment. The, the difference between the substitute and the current ordinance is it simply strikes the reference to construction and demolition landfill. That is not what this is. So that removes that from the caption and in the fourth recital uh, because it's not a construction and demolition facility. The amendment adds five recitals clauses. I'll read them briefly if you wish. Whereas the Metro National Public Works Department and Davidson County Solid Waste Region Board are working to create a long-term solid waste master plan with the ultimate goal of achieving zero waste to landfill in the future. Whereas the waste characterization study commissioned as part of the solid waste master planning process showed that food waste makes up over 15% of landfilled waste and that over 25% of landfill waste is compostable. Whereas the proposed facility may divert up to 50 tons of solid waste per day from landfills and process it into compost and fertilizer, which can be sold to surrounding farming communities and converted into energy that can be used on site or sold off site. Whereas this technology has been proven to be an efficient way to divert organic waste from landfills, reducing the environmental impact of landfills and converting the waste into beneficial byproducts. And whereas the benefit, the diversion of this organic waste will be a significant factor in helping Nashville achieve its goal of zero waste by 2040. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any comments on the amendment? Seeing none, having been properly moved and seconded, we are voting on the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We are back on the substitute as amended. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, I just want to be clear. I appreciate Councilmember Cooper for all his hard work as a council member at large. 
I want to be clear with the other uh, council members. I appreciate Council Member Allen for clarifying uh, what this is because it did say demol demolition solid waste. I'm only asking, I'm not deferring or holding anything up. I'm only asking at third reading that we have a public hearing because there has not been a community meeting and there has not been a council member there. And we have just held a public hearing. And I think in all fairness to the community and total transparency and not starting a new precedent that we should have a public hearing uh, on this bill and not just go straight to uh, having a public hearing and then having a community meeting and not allowing those persons who want to participate in the process giving them the opportunity. So I'm asking, I'm making a motion that we have a public hearing on third uh, reading after a community meeting has been held just so more people, more citizens, more residents, more constituents can be informed and the uh, process can be totally transparent. That is my motion. I would ask for those that believe in that, uh, that you support that. Okay. Thank you. And, and a qu quick question for Mr. Jamison. That's, that's possible and the the so July 17th meeting? What I would do, Council Lady Gilmore, is move to suspend the rules. A, a council member can ask for uh, public hearing input at any time, not just zoning bills, but it's done under the rules at that meeting. So in other words, soon to be Councilman Hall would, on July 17th, have the option at that meeting of asking two-thirds approval to conduct the public hearing then. If you want to make the motion now, you'd have to suspend the rules because Rule 32 reads a little differently. Hang on, it's Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm making a motion to suspend the rules under Rule 32. Is there an objection to a suspension of the rules? Okay. We have two objections to a suspension of the rules. We're back on the bill as substituted. Well, that's fine. Councilman Cooper. Council, hang on, Council Lady Johnson, did you want to speak? Is that on the bill as substituted? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I. I wanted to share uh, some uh, background information. At the, we had a, a very robust discussion at the Public Works Committee. And I uh, asked the exact same question as Councilman, uh, Council Lady Gilmore, because this uh, magnitude of the uh, zone change, not zone change, uh, you know, new proposal, it's like what's the community involvement? But uh, knowing uh, Mr. Barry Salkins in here and spoke, that means uh, Councilman Cooper and you know the community is informed because he is not only uh, reside in Bell's Bend, but he is the one the person uh, the board member uh, from Bell's Bend to uh, Beamans to Bell's Bend. So I don't know if you are familiar with some uh, very controversial zone change. Uh, it uh, involves uh, Maytown Center. From there, the community is very, very keen to what's happening in the community. So just because the public large community meeting may not uh, have taken place, that does not mean community was not informed. And you know, I think uh, Council Member Cooper did a good job in absence of a district council member, and I have every confidence uh, that Council Member, newly elected uh, Council Member Hall, will involve community and inform. And I would like to share at the public uh, committee hearing, uh, there was great support in, uh, of that uh, project as well. So for that, uh, I would like to encourage you know, uh, tonight we move this uh, bill forward. Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman Cooper. So I, I agree with everything my friend Council Lady Gilmore says. This is not an ideal process. There are several million dollars worth of grants that will expire. So uh, the, the woman, uh, Seema Prasad, who on her own has taken upon it herself to really create a, a visionary thing for Nashville, really an outstanding national contribution that'll put Nashville in the forefront of how we handle food waste, has organized an extensive amount of fundraising. Some of these grants, some of them from the state of Tennessee itself, will burn off unless there's a location. So you have to go get a location, here is a location uh, TDEC says the Jackson Law needs to apply. Uh, I don't think it does, but in an abundance of caution, let's let the Jackson Law apply. So the Jackson Law has its own timetable. 
In the meantime, you have this awkwardness of having a very fine elected council person only being elected last Thursday. So it was hard to schedule a community meeting before the public hearing until you actually have a council member. So now in this case, you're doing the public hearing tonight and then community meetings with the new council member. And I have every confidence that the new council member at that time will listen to the community and decide whether they are for it or not. And then share his view with us on third reading. And it's, though it's not ideal, it's the only way to keep, uh, a, a, to have an actionable item. You could make this go away by not being able to live up to the Jackson Law timetable. You can make this go away by the community indicating to um, the new council person that they're not really for it. So far, I am not aware of any opposition to this. Um, now, the new council member in District 1 will have a more detailed understanding of that, and the community engagement needs to go, certainly needs to go forward. Nobody's saying that that's not going to go forward. It's just that we've only gotten a new council person in time to be able to do it on this timetable. And if we had an August meeting that was 30 days from now, then that would be completely fine to defer that. But our August meeting is unfortunately more than 30 days from today. And so this has given us the unfortunate timetable of, of having the public hearing tonight, then a community meeting, then the new council person taking a seat, and then his, this being his, his first action as the council member from District 1. And again, I feel better about this by having an elected District 1 council member opining whether that's in the interest of the community. Again, there's a great deal of environmental interest and a lot of support, certainly in the farming community in District 1. So with that, Council Lady, the, uh, Madam Chairman, the ability to suspend the rules next time for public hearing also occurs, it right? It, it also does. occurs. It so does. it doesn't mean that we don't have the opportunity to suspend the rules to have a public hearing at the next time. But I, with that, I move for the acceptance of the substitute and then this sent on to its path of a community hearing and third reading next time. Okay, so we have um, a little bit of a tweak to our plan. Our councilman-elect for this district wishes to speak. Oh. We have seven people in the queue. Is there any objection to allowing me to reopen the public hearing to allow our council member-elect to speak about his district? Seeing none, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll be really brief. Um, We've had extensive conversation about this, but because of the election cycle really being compounded from transit to judicial to the council race and then runoff, there's been very little time to get the information accurately out to the four adjoining or closest subdivisions to this where this development would be. So we're trying to take this week to get that information to those people. Scottsboro Bells being community is a little further along having been part of this conversation and process, because this has actually been going on for a few years, trying to make this project happen. So um, we've got two, one, maybe two meetings scheduled in the same week, the Tuesday and Saturday prior to next council meeting. And those are targeted specifically for those four adjacent or adjoining subdivisions that are closest to this project. There's no reason for us to, to meet again with Scottsboro or, or Bell Bend, but they will be involved in those meetings. Thank you. Questions? Okay, I'm gonna go back to the queue after I close the public hearing, and I will call on Councilman Sledge. Previous question. Takes two thirds. Hang on a minute. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We are on the bill as substituted. Is there anyone wishing to speak on the bill as substituted? Oh, never mind. We can't do that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right. We are now on the bill as substituted. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks for your patience, y'all. 
BL 2018-1226, Councilman Pulley referred to Planning Commission, changes 50.25 acres from R40 to RS40 zoning for various properties located at Granny White Pike, Camelot Court, Camelot Road, and Lancelot Road. Councilman Pulley. I'd like to move to open the public hearing, please. Would anyone wishing to speak? All in favor, please raise your hand. All in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing none on either side, Councilman Pulley. I'd move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor. Opposed, motion passes. BL 2018-1227, Council Lady Haywood changes 5.97 acres from CS and OR20 to MUGA zoning for properties located at 2820, 2828 Dickerson Pike and a portion of Dickerson Pike unnumbered. Council Lady Haywood. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At this time, I'd like to call for the public hearing. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing none on either side, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Haywood. I'd like to call for approve, move to approve. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed, motion passes. BL 2018-1228, Councilman Withers, applies 14.5 acres of a neighborhood conservation overlay district for various properties along Rosebank Avenue, McCarn Street, Tillman Lane, Washington Avenue, Powers Avenue, and Waters Avenue. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to open the public hearing, please. When anyone in favor, please raise your hand. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to move approval with a very brief comment. The the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Just like to thank Mr. John Lazier, who is here this evening uh, as well, and he's been working on this with his neighbors uh, for uh, quite some time since our last expansion of Eastwood's overlay. Also, would like to give special appreciation to uh, Mr. Bennett, who is uh, the owner of an iconic home in that area. Uh, much of this area was originally the yard of that iconic home, and he's been a great caretaker of that property and his other rental properties in the area and has been an avid supporter of neighborhood preservation and just wish to thank him for that gift that he's given to our city that ensures that that historic structure will always be present uh, uh, for, our, for our area. So just want to thank all the neighbors for their work on this and renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1229, Councilman Bedney changes 49 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for properties located at 6397 Pettus Road and Pettus Road unnumbered to permit 145 single-family lots. Councilman Bedney. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to open the public hearing, please. Thank you. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bedney. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, just for the people watching on TV, uh, this is, I got some calls from some of you. These, we had meetings about this project. We have uh, three different proposals. The last one was endorsed by the community. And then uh, it kind of went to sleep while they were working things out. And so like many months later, it showed up uh, as they were uh, going ready to submit the drawings. And the drawings they submitted match what you all had approved at the meeting. So uh, for the people that call me, what are the signs about thinking that it's a different layout? No, it's the same one that you all approved at the last community meeting. And that's why I'm allowing it to move forward. So I'm asking the council to support this uh, on second reading. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1231, Councilman Hager changes 0.47 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 209 22nd Street and 22nd Street to permit all uses under the MULA zoning district except for alternative financial services and waste management uses and to limit the maximum height. Councilman Hager. Uh, 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would anyone in favor wish to speak? Please raise your hand. Anyone in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hager. As for passage with a brief statement, please. Floor is yours. Um, I want to talk about uh, Mr. Uh, Brockman here with Twin Team. He's come into Lakewood and has really started to take some of these old buildings and redevelop them. And also, this is an MULA down by the boat docks, and we work together to do some restrictions on it. So I appreciate him working with the community to get all this done and renovate some of the old buildings over in the Lakewood area. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed, motion passes. BL 2018-1232, Councilman Swope cancels 24.69 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for properties located at 201, 205, 305 Summit View Drive and Summit View Drive unnumbered west of Fox Ridge Drive. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Madam President. Can I ask that we take 1232 and 1233 simultaneously? Same address. Uh, looks like the same. Address. I'm not allowed to address you directly. You yes, we can. Yes. Thank you, okay. Madam President. Do you want to read the second caption? I'm going to read both captions, yes. BL 2018, let me read both of them again. BL 2018-1232 cancels 24.69 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for properties located at 201, 205, 305 Summit View Drive and Summit View Drive unnumbered west of Fox Ridge Drive. BL 2018-1233, Councilman Swope, amends 24.69 acres from CL, CS, OL, and RM15 to SP zoning for all properties located at 201, 205, 305 Summit View Drive and Summit View Drive unnumbered west of Fox Ridge Drive to permit a mixed use development. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Madam President. Move to open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in favor wish to? Are you in opposition? <laughs> was that a yes? I can't say. Was that a yes or a no? Uh, are you in opposition, sir? So if anyone in opposition would like to line up at the lectern, in favor would like to line up at the lectern and speak. Seeing no one in favor wishing to speak, would anyone in opposition wish to come up to the lectern to speak? Okay, you do want to speak if you're in favor. Y'all, if you're in favor, please line up at the lectern to speak. I'm Wade Weissman. I reside at 5620 Stanford Court in Nashville. Um, I'm the architect for the project as the proposed. Um, the project is uh, a very interesting project that is creating a, a community um, within the community. Um, there is a hospitality, um, a, um, a few uh, food venues um, as a mixed use piece. There's also a wellness component to this with a spa. There's a retainage of the property for a parkland, and then there's a residential component. And each of these pieces were uh, situated on the site to be synergistic with its immediate surroundings. So the hotel component is sitting uh, closely on top of Old Hickory Boulevard next to another hospitality venue that's there um, and behind an office structure. And the residential component sits within the residential area closest to the other residents in the area. And the idea is to create a development that has harmony with its surroundings. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bob Hyde. I reside at 227 Glenstone Circle uh, in a neighborhood that is a property is adjacent to the uh, development. I uh, had the pleasure of attending uh, a community program where they did an excellent job uh, showing us the benefits not only of the immediate neighbors but of our entire community. Uh, very strongly in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm David Clayton. I live at 271 Glenstone Circle in Brentwood. 
I'm adjacent, our development is Brentwood Villa, and we are, um, I'm in favor totally of this development. I think it will do a lot to enhance uh, Stonebrook Drive will be redirected and, and widened, and I think there'll be some impact on Old Erku Boulevard at the foot of the hill, which is a disaster most afternoons and mornings. So I would look forward to the development and uh, encourage uh, us to move forward with it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in opposition, please line up at the lectern to speak. Uh, my name is Alexander Gavant. I live at 131 Villa View Court, also in the Brentwood Villa. I apologize if I'm not as prepared as I should be. This is the first time I've been able to make it out to any of these, so I apologize. But I'm not directly opposed to this. I just wanted to voice concerns, and they actually addressed a couple of them already. Um, but the two of them were related to the traffic concerns, just with um, Stonebrook turning onto Old Hickory. Um, I'm still, I still have a small concern with that related to, um, I work in Cool Springs, so I commute down 65 South every day, and turning out from Stonebrook onto Old Hickory is already kind of a mess anywhere near rush hour, and I'm a little bit afraid of what this will do to impact that further, so I'm just hoping considerations have been made for that either, it sounds like considerations have been made from the Stonebrook side, but I'm hoping that um, impact on Old Hickory as well has been considered. Um, and then from the traffic perspective as well, I've seen talk in the plans of changes to Summit View Drive coming up from Church Street on the south side of the development coming up the hill. From what I've seen, it seems like that's just going to be a service road, and if that's the case, that seems to be okay. Um, but my... Uh, unit is an end unit on Villa View Court, immediately adjacent to Summit View Drive. So if that becomes hev more heavily traveled, I'd be more concerned with noise coming from that as well. So I'd just like to also state that as a concern. Um, and then also being on Villa View Court, that is a street that's immediately adjacent to the hill that this property will be constructed on. So I also have concerns for the character or the uh, character of that area. So I'm hoping concerns have been made for at least keeping some degree of separation between the existing development where I'm at and the new development. Um, just some green separation just so that there is a little bit of retaining of the current character of the neighborhood. So all that to say, not directly opposed, just voicing concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else at the lectern, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Madam President. I would move approval with a not quite so brief comment. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, th this, is, this is the hill that you see when you're going south on 65 that is Brentwood. Um, it's been called Water Tower Hill forever. It is currently zoned for a 600,000 square foot office building, which you can just imagine the traffic implication with a 600,000 square foot office building, especially between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. and from four until six every day. I have been approached by no less than eight developers on what to do with this hill. It is the iconic hill or could be the iconic hill in Brentwood. And the developers that are before you now have brought together a plan that includes a hotel, a spa, some restaurants, uh, an indoor small, very intimate music venue uh, 21 very expensive bungalows and a huge open space that they're willing to share with the entire community. It is incredibly well thought out. In fact, they have been back to the drawing board and the architect will attest to this. Uh, I, I want to say six times at least, probably eight, um, based on community involvement. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Devine, if you didn't make the community meetings we had on this or the HOA meetings we had on this, most of the concerns that you have have already been addressed or are being addressed right now. Uh, specifically, the one thing that's left in, in question, only because the designs are still not quite done yet, is the entrance to Brentwood Villas. And the developers here, I will state publicly, have agreed to work with the HOA of Brentwood Villas to 
design something that works for everybody, and they're willing to pay for that. So rest assured that your neighbors are going to be good neighbors to you. Uh, I will say that what they've designed here is iconic. It looks like an Italian countryside. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I'm very proud of what they've done. I'm proud to be involved with it. I'm very proud of the planning commission and the planning staff for going through the year or so of work to get this done. I will say this passed on a consent agenda with the planning commission unanimously, and it's a $335 million project. I think that pretty much says it all. Um, and with that said, I ask for your approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1234, Councilman Sledge changes 0.62 acres from R6 to RM20A zoning for properties located at 1088, 1090, and 1092 12th Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam President. Open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in favor wish to speak? Please come to the lectern and share with us your name and address, please. Hi, I'll keep this short. My name is Troy Olson. I live at 904 Villa Place, about two blocks from the project. Um, I'm the, also the developer on the project. Um, we're basically only asking for the same zoning that's across the street. It's on one of the main uh, intersections uh, coming up out of the gulch. And um, we reached out several times during the planning commission meetings to make sure that we had plenty of outreach to the community. And we seem to be moving forward with everything that we need to do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Councilman Sledge, I declare the public hearing closed. Floor thank is yours. You. Thank you, Madam President. I move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1235. Councilman Kendall. Count Councilman Glover, you're handling that one for him. Changes 3.77 acres from MUG8 and ORI to SP zoning for property located at 311 23rd Avenue North to permit all uses within MUIA while limiting the height structures to eight stories in 105 feet. Councilman open, Glover. Open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Anyone in favor wish to speak? I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Glover. Move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1236, Councilman Rosenberg, changes 10.57 acres from R80 and R40 to SP zoning for properties located at River Road Unnumbered and 5754 River Road to permit up to 35 multifamily residential units. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you are in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1237, Council Lady Murphy changes 0.44 acres from CS to SP zoning for properties located at 420 and 422, 38th Avenue North to permit 10 multifamily units. Council Lady Murphy. I'd like to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Murphy. I'd like to move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1238, Councilman Sledge, changes 1.03 acres from R6 to MULA zoning for properties located at 353, 355, and 357 Glen Rose Avenue and 354 Hester Avenue. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam President. I open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I move approval. 
having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1239, Councilman Glover changes 0.23 acres from R6 to OR20 zoning from properties located at 33rd Avenue North Unnumbered. Councilman Glover. Open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Glover. Move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1240, Councilman Syracuse, amends 2.94 acres of a specific plan for properties located at 1590, 1600, 1602, and 1604 Lebanon Pike to permit 33 multifamily residential units. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Madam President. Open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing none on either side, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Madam President. Move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1241, Councilman Sledge, cancels 20.92 acres of a planned unit development for properties located at 1430 and 1501 Hillside Avenue, 809 Edge Hill Avenue, and 929 Edge Hill Avenue. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Do you mind if we take the, this one up, along with 1242? They're related. On separate addresses. We can't. They're different addresses. Okay. All right. So I will ask to open the public hearing. Thank you. Anyone in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Go ahead and put your hands down. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Would anyone in favor like to speak? Please line up at the lectern. Hi, my name is Ben Brewer. I'm the president of Elmington Capital, and um, I'm the applicant. Elmington's been before y'all several times over the last two years, and all related to affordable housing. And together with your partnership, we currently have 900 new affordable housing units under construction in Davidson County. I think it's something we should all be really proud of. This deal is very similar to that. It's a project that we bought uh, back in 2016, and when we bought it, we started meeting with several very important groups. The Park at Hillside Tenant Association, Homes for All, the Edge Hill Coalition, Neighbors of Reservoir Park, friends of Fort Negley, and of course, Councilman Sledge, who's been gracious to attend all 13 public meetings that we've had. At first, these groups didn't agree on much, except for one thing, that the existing homes on this property were not sustainable long-term, and without a new proposal, the affordable housing on the property would be lost. With that common ground, we created primary goals to redevelop the property, to provide high-quality, sustainable, affordable housing, to create a development that does not displace the current residents, to bring together affordable and market rate housing to create a true mixed income community. Additionally, we've been working with Salama, which is a local nonprofit that works for, with kids in, in an after school program throughout the community to help facilitate a new facility inside of the new affordable housing we plan to build. As we worked with the public and with planning, we agreed to address traffic through the SP process. We agreed to over seven pages of transportation improvement conditions within the SP, and once this is developed, once it's complete, the environment will be significantly better for pedestrians and cyclists, and the conditions put forth by Public Works are designed to address the increase in traffic. We have worked with Edge Hill Coalitions and the Friends of Fort Negley to address view sheds. And through this conversation and the hard work of Metro Planning, Parks, and Historic, we've agreed to reduce building heights and reconfigure buildings to reposition them so they minimize the impact of view sheds to and from the reservoir. Lastly, through working with the Park at Hillside Tenant Association, we came to an agreement with them to voluntarily provide an unprecedented level of affordable housing, which we can all be very proud of. The program we utilize is restricts units to 60% of area median income, and we are seeking to further restrict an additional 25% of these units to 50% of the area median income. We believe and hope that this development will be looked upon as one of Nashville's greatest public-private partnerships, ensuring the residents of Edge Hill and the Park at Hillside have a quality, affordable place to live for years to come. Thank you for your time, and uh, I ask for your approval on this rezoning package. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Council. I'm Ben Miskelly with Kimley Horn. We're the lead land planning group for this plan. I just wanted to speak in support of Elmington. Elmington has been great at meeting every request made by planning, historic, public works, uh, water services, anyone that's came to the table, Elmington's been willing to bend and flex and make changes to this plan. This plan meets all the goals of Nashville Next. This is what we set apart as council, as planners, as people on planning commission with Nashville Next is density on the corridors, transitions back to the neighborhood, and it provides an affordable housing level that we don't usually see in the city. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Barbara Shelbourne, and I live at 1416 Hillside Avenue. To, on the second, I sent a rebuttal to the friends of Fort Nagley to all of the members here. Um, and I won't go over that again. You can please check your email. I appreciate that. But for Elmington, is doing the right thing in the right city. The, in, in Nashville, it's possible to do things. And when you do the right thing, you can't quantify it. And he is, and the Elmington group is doing the right thing, along with MDHA and Edge Hill. But Elmington property would be probably first in the country to have a private-public partnership go this way. What we'd like to ask um, uh, also to remember that the letter from uh, Friends of Fort Negley was 30 days after the May 10th planning commission, which passed it eight to nothing. We also like to uh, feel that he, they are appropriating uh, African American history by saying, oh, we this and we that, when there was only one shot fired from Fort Nagley, but over 1,000 African-Americans died uh, building it. <clears throat> so we'd like to ask the opposition, what will they do? Because we ha already have raised expectations about getting this place. And if all of those folks say, hey, don't do this because we can't see something that's unseeable at the moment with this reservoir, then who is going to build it for us? They're, they're trampling on African-Americans' dream once again. Thank you. Hello, my name's Kathleen Williams. I reside at 1620 Hillside Avenue. I've been there five years, and Ellington's been really helping us out, trying to not get us displaced, because some of us that don't have families like me here, sorry, we don't have families here to go anywhere, so if we get displaced, we don't have nowhere to go. And I really appreciate it if y'all would help us out so we don't get displaced. Thank you. My name is George Davis. I live at 1422 Hillside. Um, I'd just like to say that I probably, I've been living there for about five years. As I've lived there, there has been, as far as I know, at least four different owners. Uh, the property is 45 years old. Just like any property that's 45 years old, you know, there may be a few rough spots. And uh, frankly, like they said before, uh, the, the property just really needs to be replaced. Um, as I've been there, they have been cleaning it up. Like Again, like any low-income property, you know, you're going to have some crime. You're going to have a lot of problems around there a lot of times. Um, each owner has consistently cleaned it up and done a little better. I, as I will say, if I've, as I've been there for five years, it's the best that it's been so far. Um, and, you know, many of us have kids, and we want a safe place for the kids to live. Now, uh, Elmington has been keeping us abreast of the different changes, uh, well, the, 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 the property, the design of the property. They've had several different meetings, like they've mentioned before, meeting directly with different groups in the community. And uh, in each one of the um, uh, designs, they have you know, shown us that there's going to be uh, key fobs, as far as I understand, uh, a, a garage. Uh, there's going to be video cameras. So again, we're talking a lot more safety for the kids. Um, 
Well, I, I think they said that we weren't supposed to say things that had already been said, but I just want to say again about the affordability. Um, they've also agreed to, to do this thing one for one. They're replacing our low-income units. Uh, you know, people need uh, good, safe places to live, and like it was just said before, where are people like us going to go? I'm a disabled individual, and it's not like I can live a whole lot of places, and, uh, you know, there's there's a whole lot of options for an individual like me. But, uh, you know, with this new development, you know, that'll be a good thing, I guess, for everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone in opposition wish to speak? Thank you. Please come to the lectern, share your name and address. Hi, my name is Mark Schlicker. I reside at 5161 Whitaker Drive here in Nashville. Um, first of all, I want to thank the council for, at the last meeting, um, unanimously approving, uh, or rather disapproving, the sale of the William Edmondson home site, Morell School property. Um, it proves that uh, it proves a couple of things. One is that the council can get together on a bipartisan basis and make decisions that are for the good of both an individual community, but reverberate in a positive way out to the entire city. Um, I'm coming uh, as an individual tonight, not as a representative of an organization, but someone who, in the process of the uh, home site uh, process. Um, learned a few things and started to see a few things and want to make a, a case for a couple of things that have not been spoken to. Um, one thing that the vote, uh, recent vote proved is it's never too late to rethink a bad idea. And it's never too late to rethink a narrative of inevitability. I am 100% in favor of affordable housing. I think that we should go beyond one for one. I think we are selling our city short by settling for one for one. I think we are selling our, our residents of these properties short by quadrupling the density as the price that they have to pay for one for one. This development, nor the proposed Envision Edge Hill that you'll be dealing with in the weeks and months to come from MDHA, anticipates adding one single additional affordable unit, but each of these contemplates quadrupling the overall density. MDHA's comprehensive plan, which I understand was deferred and won't be considered tonight, uh, states increasing affordable housing as its number one priority, and yet that comprehensive plan speaks to maybe 150 units in the next 10 years. That's disgusting. It's never too late to say no to a bad idea or to rethink a bad idea. They're contemplating 1,200 units. The R20 zoning uh, 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 allows for some 490 units, as I recall, under the existing R20 zoning. If Elmington can't provide a one-for-one -one on the affordable housing, and make money on an overall development of almost 500 units, then they pay too much for the property, and why should the, the people of Nashville have to cover their bad bet? Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else lined at the lectern, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I move approval with a very brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, so this is the PUD cancellation. So I'm going to ask that the council move approval on this, and the next bill is the SP that has been referred to, I think, in all the comments, and I'd like to have a more robust explanation on that one. So what I'm going to do now, because we're simply talking about a PUD cancellation, I'd ask that we move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, we have one in the queue. Council Lady Gilmore. Uh, thank you. Um, Madam Vice Mayor, I, I had a question, Ms. Sledge. I'm, why were you canceling the plan unit development? And I may have missed it. I did step out. If you could just explain why you would be canceling that and what all it entailed. Uh, sure, Councilor Gilmore. That's a good question. So these two bills are very much related. What has occurred, the reason we're not taking them, um, sorry, the reason we're not taking them uh, together is because the PUD did not cover the full 
uh, 23.3 acres that is the park at Hillside. It, it wasn't the full thing. So the PUD is being canceled in order for us to contemplate the rezoning, which is the next bill. And you said this is the park at Hillside? That's the name of it, okay. yes. It's, that's the name of the apartment complex. Okay, got you. Yeah. And so you're just canceling because you want to, could you speak to the affordability piece? You're thinking it'll be more affordable and just explain how that works. I, I, I'm happy to do that. However, I would like to speak to it on the next bill because that's what actually does that. Not okay, this. but you want to cancel on this the part? cancellation yeah. right now. But so this, we can this has to be canceled in, other, in, a, in order to go to the next bill, right? Right. Okay, thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, motion passes. BL 2018-1242, Councilman Sledge amends 23.32 acres from CS and RM20 to SP for properties located at 1201, 1203, 1205, and 1211 8th Avenue South, 1430 and 1501 Hillside Avenue, 809 and 929 Edge Hill Avenue to permit 1,200 multifamily residential units and non-residential uses. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. If you would like to speak in favor, please raise your uh, please come stand at the lectern. Anyone in favor wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dewana Wade, and I reside at 5321 Ryan Allen Circle, Whites Creek, Tennessee, actually in District 3. However, I am here representing Salama Urban Ministries, as mentioned um, previously by the representative from Elmington Capital. And I'm representing Salama relative to the fact that we are right behind um, Hill, the park at Hillside, and we serve families and children that are living in that area as well as in the Edge Hill area, um, further close, further um, toward 12 South. And we are in favor of this bill because we recognize that affordable housing is a very, very challenged um, commodity in this area. But we also recognize that some of our families have been living in um, very challenged conditions, living in the current housing that is there. And um, no one should live like that. And so we have an opportunity now to support what Elmington is doing, provide one for one, if not more. Um, we've been in conversation with uh, Elmington as well as Park at Hillside residents, and I've watched Elmington work very closely and very um, diligently with residents to make change relative to what's happening at the Park at Hillside. And so I'm here simply advocating on behalf of the folks that we look at every day, that we talk to every day, that are in need of good quality housing. And I believe and have faith in Elmington to do with our accountability. I have faith and believe in them to do this project in a way that supports the families that we serve. Um, and I urge you to pass this bill. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ben Brewer with the applicant. And real quick, I just think it's important to point out you, when you talk about the affordable housing on this property, we're we're voluntarily imposing a 20 over 24 percent requirement for affordability. And when you talk about inclusionary zoning and where that was uh, last year, and talked about you know it was 14 percent, and we've chosen to do 24 percent on this project. And you know, affordable housing is a big issue in our city and I think it's one of this our mission as a company is to provide affordable housing we have 900 units in Davidson County under construction brand new not one for one one for zero like they didn't exist additionally we have another 900 under construction throughout the state and we hope to continue to develop and help the cities of Nashville and the cities of Tennessee with the affordable housing problem we have today thanks thank you I'd like to return to the rebuttal of Fort Negley. It is surprising that the author of this letter is not here. The friends of Fort Negley are not here. And everybody else who wrote on that uh, is not here either. This, this gentleman is here by himself. So you would need to look as to why they're trying to keep delaying this uh, and for one of 
anything is ground zero. There's nothing left to develop once these 23 acres in Edge Hill is done. And it is downtown. If people think they live in the suburbs, they do not live in the suburbs. You are in Midtown. So again, uh, I would like the members to think on who sent you this re rebuttal letter from Fort Nagley. The friends of Fort Nagley did not bother to show up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in opposition wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. Hello, thank you for another opportunity to speak to this. Um, it has been said that this is in keeping with Nashville Next. Um, you may or may not be aware that uh, the underlying uh, zoning, or I'm sorry, the land use policy is uh, uh, T4 evolving, which indicates a uh, preference to medium to high density development. Now, it doesn't say that it must be high density development. It contemplates that possibility, but medium development is possible too. High density development is not inevitable under T4 evolving. I must also correct the uh, characteriz mischaracterization that the highest density would be along the quarters. If you look at the plan that they have submitted to uh, planning, that is not true. It is high density throughout, including the interior streets. Um, beyond that, you may or may not be aware that prior to National Next, there was a great deal of planning done in the 2004-2005 uh, range, and there is a detailed neighborhood design plan that was uh, promulgated at that time for uh, this Edge Hill neighborhood. Um, I want to read one of the um, goals and concepts from that plan. Uh, this is number six. I'm sorry, the pages are unnumbered. But if this is goal number six, residential for the majority of the neighborhood, filling in around the above activities that preserves the neighborhood's existing residential areas and envisions the eventual reversion of some areas back to residential. Uh, specifically with regard to that, the uh, uh, area that is part of this subject property, uh, the majority of it was planned out in this uh, uh, detailed neighborhood plan to go back to single family detached or single family attached. Not a 10 story boutique hotel, which is part of the plan uh, of the mixed use, which I believe there, uh, I don't know, Councilman Sledge, if there is another, um, uh, another uh, bill coming up for public hearing, but one of the mixed, use, uh, mixed uses that are specifically contemplated in the plan that Elmington has presented to the Planning Commission is a 10-story hotel on Edge Hill Avenue. Now, the affordable housing, we talk about not having concentrated poverty. Well, the affordable housing that is in this plan is concentrated into three buildings on one side uh, of the uh, development that is closest to what uh, MDHA will be developing. In other words, it's a pre-designed um, area of concentrated poverty. Uh, these folks deserve better than that. They shouldn't have to settle for crumbs. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is A.V. Long, and I live at 1222 15th Avenue South. Uh, tonight, I am speaking on behalf of the Edge Hill Neighborhood Coalition. Um, and the Edge Hill Neighborhood Coalition, along with about four or five other neighborhood organizations, uh, the Reservoir uh, Neighborhood Association, 12 South, um, uh, Houston Wedgwood, Friends of Fort Negley, we wrote a letter to uh, Councilman Sledge and also to the members at large stating our positions in regard to the height conditions. Um, a lot of people are traveling and it looks like I'm the only person here from the coalition, uh, but a lot of people are traveling and a lot of people are out of town because of the holidays. So that's why you're not seeing um, as many people who are against uh, the height conditions. And, but before I get into that, I do want to say that we are absolutely, we are neighbors to Salama, Salama Urban Industries and the Park at Hillside Tenant Association. They are our neighbors. And we have, a, have uh, supported them and 
tried to encourage them in what they were doing as much as possible. So we have no opposition whatsoever to affordable housing. We were very happy, we were very excited, we, re we rejoiced with them when we found out that there would be one-to-one -one replacement because we do not want to see any of our neighbors displaced. So uh, I need to make that clear up front to our neighbors, Salama and Park at Hillside, and also to the council. So that is not what we're in opposition for. Of We're not in opposition of that at all. Um, our concern is regarding the proposed development and the dramatic change to the character of the Edge Hill neighborhood through height, massing, and density detailed in the SP and through the application of a corridor policy to a neighborhood. We are not aware of any precedents in other Nashville neighborhoods for aspects of the proposed development, including the plan to build two towers on Edge Hill Avenue with maximum heights of 10 and 11 stories, respectfully. There are no such structures in Nashville, to our knowledge, located on a similar site, a site where there are three parks and across the street from two schools. Thank there are you. obvious reasons why uh, this should not be built in these locations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Betty Davis. I live at 1105 Argyle Avenue. There is no reason to pit neighbors against neighbors. Some city leaders are trying to say that if heights of the buildings are reduced, then the affordable housing may possibly be deleted. One does not have to affect the other. We should be able to reduce the building heights and maintain the affordable housing agreement. With that said, I would like to say, stop trying to smother us out with these tall buildings. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'd clear the public hearing close. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor, and I appreciate the uh, council's indulgence. We first started meeting about this property about 18 months ago. Um, the park at Hillside, the history of park at Hillside, is one that is one that Nashville should not be proud of. Um, it, several years ago, it was owned by Bank of America, who had the low-income housing tax credits on it, and did what I would call the bare minimum, if you can call it that, to maintain those low-income housing tax credits. It was then sold by Bank of America to an out-of-state landlord, who I had to deal with when I first came into office with many of you. And I can tell you that the experience was both um, completely miserable and it was an affront to what we should be about here in the council. One of the women that I met through that experience was named Kenitha Patterson. She was being evicted from that, and I had no, from that very property, and I had no opportunity to basically do any work with the out-of-state landlord who, out, who dismissed me out of hand. Um, there, were, <laughs> there were all kinds of problems here, but I want to speak to what the property is at all. This is a very unusual property. This is 23 and a third acres in our downtown core, where 290 units sit that, as I noted before, almost nothing has been done with, and the units have been in pretty, what I would call, poor condition. Um, as we started these conversations with Elmington, Elmington mentioned from the very beginning they wanted to do a one-to-one -one replacement at the current area median income levels, which are 50 and 60 percent of area median income. What does that mean in real terms? $720 for one bedroom, $840 for two bedrooms, $960 for three bedrooms. We're talking a one-to-one -one replacement on those units. But this plan goes way, 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 way beyond that. There are 23 and a third acres in our downtown core where there have been a lot of promises made, even through that DNDP, which I should know is no longer active. That DNDP did not carry through with Nashville Next because we're a different city in 2018 than we were in 2004 when that DNDP was put forward. But facets of that DNDP are actually carried forward and completed with this plan. There are streets, there are grids to the Edge Hill that were never completed that will be completed because of this. There's infrastructure that has been promised to these neighborhoods for 20 years that will be done with this project because our metro government has put in the accountability measures that are necessary 
in order to do those. I want to speak also to the view sheds. I want to really thank the Historic Commission and the Parks Department as well. There's been an issue or question come up about view sheds regarding Fort Negley. The view shed from Fort Negley to, to the reservoir is protected under this plan. The five story, it does not go above the ring road for the view shed of this reservoir. The view shed, the existing view shed from Rose Park to the reservoir is also protected under this plan. Um, and then the only view shed that we are talking about that these two buildings, I want to talk about in a minute, affect are the, from the reservoir to downtown, a view shed that currently none of us enjoy unless we go to the Metro Water Department and ask them to let us in the reservoir. There are plans which this SP will help accelerate to reopen the reservoir to the public and create a park around it where indeed you could see to downtown. This plan helps in that it will help accommodate a public viewing deck for a framed view of downtown from the reservoir that again, currently our public cannot and does not enjoy. Um, I, I wanna be very clear that there's a lot of other infrastructure that comes through this. There's an extensive traffic study that will include uh, infrastructure for bike lanes and infrastructure for the increased traffic that will occur. But I also wanna speak to density. The map that hopefully y'all are able to look at, the density is at 8th and Edge Hill. It tapers back into the neighborhood to, to one and two family dwellings over on the other side of the reservoir, the south side of the reservoir, where I should note, these buildings will not be seen. The buildings do not come above the reservoir from the southern view. And when you're looking at from the northern view, there are significant and multiple step backs on those two buildings. With the time I've got remaining, I wanna note that this is, a, again, more than the affordable housing piece. I have heard from Edge Hill residents the need for basic services. The only grocery store, which quite frankly was an affront to many of our neighbors, closed on 12th Avenue. And this is the opportunity to try to provide those services again in structures that can work with the rest of the, uh, with the, rest of the neighborhood. As noted, there is vacant Metro-owned property on the other side, so it is not affecting anyone on the other side. There's Rose Park Middle, and then there's also uh, what is, I hope to be soon, a reopened fire department. I really encourage council participation and support on this. Council Lady Dow. Thank you. I had my button pressed the last time, but I just asked that uh, when you ask for opposition, you give us an opportunity to say whether we oppose or not. Uh, when you call for for and then against, it went pretty fast. So people who wanted to oppose didn't have an opportunity to say anything. So if you just give us a couple of seconds, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1243, Councilman Glover. Amends 0.29 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1600 Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard to permit up to three fam multifamily residential units. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Open the public hearing, please. Would anyone in favor please raise your hand? Would anyone in opposition please raise your hand? Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Glover. Move approval. Seeing no one in the queue, having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1244, Councilman Pulley. Changes 4.06 acres from R10 to R6, RS10, zoning for various properties located on General Bait Drive. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Pulley. I move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, seeing no one in the queue, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1245, Councilman Sledge and O'Connell applies 42.96 acres of a neighborhood conservation overlay district for various properties along South Street, Villa Place, Wedgwood Avenue, 15th Avenue South, Tremont Street, and Edge Hill Avenue. 
Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam President. As this was deferred at Planning Commission until the July 26th meeting, I would move to defer this to the August public hearing, please. There's a motion to defer this to the August public hearing. Is there a second? Aye. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We are now going to move to the consent agenda. The following, uh, reg the following resolutions are on the consent agenda. RS 2018-1252, RS 2018-1253, RS 2018-1268, through RS 2018-1287. Are there any other items to come off the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll read the captions. RS 2018-1252, Councilman Withers exempts Nine Tail, located at 1601A Riverside Drive from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. RS 2018-1253, Council Lady Vercher amends Resolution 2015-14-17 to extend the duration of the water and sewer extendable commercial paper program. RS 2018-1268, Council Lady Vercher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Bell South Communications to LC, LLC DBA, AT&T Tennessee against Metro Government in the amount of $100,000. RS 2018 1269, Councilman Vercher. Council Lady Vercher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Christina Flowers against Metro Government in the amount of $25,000. RS 2018-1270, Council Members Pulley, Vercher, and others authorizes the Director of Public Property to exercise an option agreement for the purchase of a flood-prone property located at 3811 Dartmouth Avenue for Metro Water Services. Resolution RS 2018-1271, Council Ladies Vercher and Roberts, approves a grant from State Farm to the Nashville Fire Department for the acquisition and training of an accelerant detection canine team. RS 2018-1272, sponsors Pulley, Vercher and Roten, approves a grant from the Friends of Green Hills Park to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to fund the purchase of materials and labor to make various improvements to the park. Resolution RS 2018-1273, sponsors Withers, Vercher, and Roten, approves a grant from the Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation for the construction and installation of fencing to protect the beehives located at Cornelio Fort Air, Port, Air Park. RS 2018 2018-1274, Council Members Vercher and Roten, approves a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to target library materials to persons having difficulty using a library and to provide special services to children and young people. RS 2018-1275, Council Members Vercher and Roten approves an application for the Library Services and Technology Act grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to provide free digital literacy training for the citizens of Nashville. RS 2018-1276, Council Members Vercher and Withers approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to support delivery of supplemental nutrition assistance program employment and training. RS 2018-1277, Council Lady Vercher approves a sub-award grant from the Northern Arizona University to the Office of Family Safety to offset travel expenses of statewide attendees to the National Domestic Violence Fatality Review Initiative. RS 2018-1278. Council Members O'Connell, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes Chang Ki Zhou and Grace Park, DBA Bamberger, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 223 Fourth Avenue North. RS 2018 1279, Council Members O'Connell, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes Four Pant LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 210 Fourth Avenue North. RS 2018 1280, Council Members Kendall, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes West End Smiles PLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1800 West End Avenue. 
RS 2018-1281, Council Lady Bircher, authorizes a grant to the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, Inc. for the purpose of conducting a well-being, sur well-being survey of the residents of Davidson County. RS 2018-1282, Council Lady Haywood, approves the election of certain notaries public for Davidson County. RS 2018-1283, Council Lady Haywood elects one member to the Board of Directors of the Industrial Development Board in the Metropolitan Government. RS 2018-1284, Council Members Kendall and Karen Johnson, recognizes and honors Sandra K. Brown. RS 2018-1285, Councilman Shulman, recognizes Eugene F. G. Nolan for his 45 years of outstanding service to the Metropolitan Government. RS 2018-1286, Council Lady Murphy, recognizes July 9, 2018 is the 100th anniversary of the Dutchman Curves train wreck. RS 2018-1287, Council Lady Mina Johnson Murphy and others, recognizes July is Family Reunion Month in Nashville. Need to get committee reports. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Madam President. Budget and Finance recommended approval. 10-4-0 against on RS 2018-1253. 1268, 1269, 1270, 1271. Um, budget and Finance recommended approval on RS-2018-1270-2-11-4-0 against. Thank you. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, health and Hospitals and Social Services recommended for approval uh, 540 against resolution 1218-1221. And if I could speak quickly about that uh, resolution. We're going to get through the committee reports first. Okay, and then we can come back and speak about it. We them. can come back to that. Okay, very good. And then resolution 2018-1201, it was recommended for indefinite deferral. You didn't do that one? No, we've only got ours 2018-1281. Okay, well then I'll come back to the other one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Roten. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Parks, Library, and Arts moved uh, 1272, 1273, 1274, and 1275. Voted eight in favor, zero against. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. The Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee met this afternoon, and we considered Resolution RS 2018-1276. Uh, we move to approve it for in favor or zero against. Thank you. Councilman Bednight? Yes, thank you. Uh, the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee uh, recommended for approval 1140 against the following legislation, RS 2018-1270. 1278, 1279, 1280. Thank you. Councilman Pridemore. Public safety, beer, regulated beverages uh, recommended for approval 440 uh, against on resolution 2018-1252 and 2018-1271. Thank you, Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend approval resolutions 1270. 78, 79, 80, 8 in favor, 0 against. Thank you. And Council Lady Haywood. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Rules Committee considered RS 2018 82, 1282, 1283, 1284, 1285, 1286, 1287. And we recommended approval 840 against. And um, with that said, with all committee reports in, I move to approve all resolutions on the consent agenda. Second. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. 
Hang on just a second. Okay, now we're gonna to move to items that are not on the consent agenda. RS 2018-1244, Councilman Shulman requests the Metropolitan General Services Department and all departments of the Metropolitan Government that display flags to fly Metro Government flags at half staff for a period of one year in honor and memory of students killed as a result of gun violence and as a reminder of the urgency of gun violence solutions. Council Member Shulman. Thank you, Madam President. Committee report, please. Council Lady Haywood. Yes, we considered that um, resolution and we voted eight, four, and zero against for an indefinite deferral. Thank you, Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Madam President. I would move to defer uh, indefinitely with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. All right, uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, so good discussion in the committee. Um, this resolution was uh, largely a symbolic gesture, uh, trying to get the flags lowered at half staff, the Metro flags, uh, so that we remember that we have a responsibility to deal with school shootings. Um, there were some people that weren't necessarily comfortable with all the procedures, um, but we can't forget that this is a problem. Um, and so I think everybody decided that we would continue to work on this and find a better way to do it. Um, I would continue to say that we have to work diligently um, to um, find solutions to protect our children uh, everywhere in school or any other place. Uh, we have to find solutions. We have to demand action. Um, again, the committee worked on this, figured there might be a better way to do this, so we're going to work through it. Uh, and with that, we'll move to defer this one uh, indefinitely, but we'll keep working on it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Having been properly moved and seconded, seeing no one in the queue, all in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Motion passes. Next is resolution RS 2018-1254, Council Member Vercher. Oops, turn you on. Councilmember Vercher. Thank you, Madam President. Um, budget and Finance recommended a approval 1040 against as substituted. I'd like to move the substitute. Thank you. All those in favor of the substitute? Aye. Oh, excuse me. I see uh, Councilmember Mendez. Councilmember Mendez. Um, just briefly, I want to uh, thank Metro Finance and uh, for getting the amount of the payment for Morgan Stanley into the documents um, and uh, getting this finalized. Thanks. Oh, thank you. I've been reminded by council I need to read the caption. Let me do that. Uh, council Re Resolution 2018-1254 authorizes the issuance and sale of water and sewer revenue bond anticipation notes in an amount not to exceed 200000 at any one time in the form of commercial paper and provides for one or more dealer agreements, issuing and paying agency agreements and credit facility agreements. Councilmember Vercher, back to your substitute. Uh, Councilmember Glover. Just very quickly, uh is it possible, I, we, I know we didn't talk about this yesterday at, at budget and finance, but at some point in the future, I would ask that Metro Water comes in and talks to us, talks to us about, are they anticipating when these are issued, if they're anticipating a, a rate increase in, in water services? Um, it's kind of one of the things that kind of slipped through yesterday and I didn't, didn't catch it in time, but I would ask uh, that at some point in the very near future, we have that conversation, please. Duly noted. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Substitute is passed. Councilmember Vercher. I move for approval. Okay, we're moving, voting on the bill as substituted. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is passed as substituted. Now, we are two bills on first reading. If there's no objection, we will take those 
in one vote. Seeing none, all those in favor of all bills on first reading? In favor, thank you. All those opposed? The bills are recommended. Now we're bills on second reading. We'll begin with BL 2018-1157, sponsor Syracuse and Mina Johnson. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Madam. So I'm sorry, I, I'm, Deputy I'm out of practice. Let me read the caption. Um, this amends the Metro Code to establish and preserve a 50-foot floodway buffer along the, council, the Cumberland River. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Madam Deputy President Pro Tem. Uh, committee reports, <laughs> please. <laughs> committee reports. Uh, Councilmember Elrod. Public Works recommend approval, eight in favor, zero against. Thank you. Council Member Syracuse. I move approval with a brief comment. Okay, we have um, one okay. Council Member of the Clue, Council Member Glover, are you up for this? Okay. Um, so let's have some discussion. We'll come back to you. Council Member Glover. Thank you. Actually, and he may have this in the uh, discussion he's about to have, but I think several of us received phone calls uh, from an individual or from a couple of individuals that live in his district that have some concerns. And so I don't know what the options are as far as a uh, um, kind of a variance on this. I don't know if they can operate the same way and go to BZA and get a variance if they can show uh, a reason for it. So uh, I would just like to, to, to get the answer because I, I frankly don't know. And I did happen to take a couple of phone calls on it and uh, I, I didn't know what to tell folks. So thank, thank you. you. I'll, I'll start with Mr. Jamison and then go back to Mr. Syracuse. Uh, the original legislation introduced after the 2010 flood did have the potential for variances. That was not intended, and there's no variance possibility under current Chapter 15 or the stormwater regulations. I believe Councilman Syracuse probably has a more elaborate way of saying that, but that's the bottom line. Mr. Syracuse? I kind of like that. Um, no. Okay, so what what uh, Mr. Jamison said. <laughs> um, so after I was elected, um, there were a number of opportunities, I guess you could say, with undeveloped properties, especially along Pennington Bend Road, uh, for, for development. However, just like Mr. Glover alluded to, uh, in order to get uh, development, you have to then go to BZA to move your potential property as far to the street as possible. That still puts you into the, uh, the Zone 1 buffer. Uh, the Zone 1 buffer is considered a no-disturb zone by Metro Stormwater. However, that the, the previous legislation did allow for, for those variances. Um, so I went about to four or five different times between BZA, then Stormwater, BZA, Stormwater. Uh, BZA would usually allow it, Stormwater would, would, would not. Um, there, it's considered a no disturb zone for a reason. We don't need to be putting density in an area that is designated a, a no disturb zone. Uh, my legislation simply says no more variances in that zone one buffer. Let's maintain a permanent 50 foot buffer from the floodway. Um, if, we, if we allow these kinds of variances, we are going to, the blood's gonna be on our hands, put, to, put, to put very bluntly, that we are gonna be allowing density along the, the river here that is going to cause the amount of damage, billions of dollars of damage that we went through the last time we had a, a major flood. And it's not if, but when a, another flood's going to happen. Um, so I reference you this, this packet that, that's, that's been put on your desk. Um, these are different examples showing you where the zone one and zone two buffer are and where um, uh, w w what's the impact of the property. Um, I, I know full well that the two folks that uh, you, you've heard from, um, I, I, even before me, they, they were having issues with, with storm water to try to develop something there, got turned down multiple times, and, uh, and, and so it goes. Um, there is an inherent risk of owning property on, on the, the riverfront li like this. Um, we cannot legislate God. The floods are going to happen. Um, it is incumbent upon us, like I said in my email to you, that uh, we do have pragmatic controls on, on the level of density of development to protect us from the next time this happens. So uh, with that, I would ask for your support and approval. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, all those in favor? Any opposed? 
bill is, is passed. Next is BL 2018-1189, sponsors Davis and Hurt. This amends Metro codes pertaining to the procurement non-discrimination program. Council member Sharon Hurt. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Um, committee reports, please. Uh, Council member Vercher. Thank you, Madam President. Budget, budget and finance recommended uh, deferral by rule uh, 1140 against. Thank you. Council member Hurt. Yes, I'd like to suspend the rule for an indefinite deferral the, uh, with a brief explanation. Any objection to the suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Council member Hurt. The uh, mayor's disparity study will be available in about 30 days, and we want to see that and take that in consideration uh, before moving, so we would like to uh, defer it indefinitely. Thank you. Been moved and seconded. Do we vote on deferral? Yes, okay, all those in favor, indefinite deferral? Any opposed? Bill is deferred. Thank you. Next is BL 2018-1190, sponsors O'Connell, Allen, and Syracuse. This amends the Metro Code to provide free parking at public parking meters in Davidson County for environmentally friendly vehicles and for vehicle owners that purchase carbon offsets. Council Member O'Connell. Apologies. Uh, we uh, would like to get committee reports on this one. Thank you. Council Member Hagar. <coughs> Uh, 1190. Which that? 2018, 1190. I think we passed that. Is that the one you deferred? Yeah, I'm sorry. We we moved to defer that for three meetings, three, four, zero again. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I was sorry I was taking advantage of Councilman Hager's office hours over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I'd like to move to defer to the second meeting in August, please. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of deferring to the second meeting in August? Any opposed? Bill is deferred. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to announce it. You're right there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we move to the next bill, no one can leave the room. There are 27 of us left. We're the lucky 27, we have to stay, thank you. We are on BL 2018-1197, Council Members Cooper and Allen. Approves the plans for a construction and demolition solid waste processing facility to be located at 4648 Ashland City Highway. That's what she's got right there. Hang on. I got it. All right, BL 2018-1200, Council Member O'Connell amends the Metro Code regarding hotels and rooming houses. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to get committee reports, please. Councilman Pride Moore. Public safety, beer, and regulatory beverages voted in favor three, four, zero against, and one not voting. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, despite the favorable recommendation from the committee, uh, I have continued to have individual members approach me with some specific concerns and with the lead sponsor away this evening, I think uh, our best bet is to uh, defer this one meeting. So I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. There's a motion for a one meeting deferral and properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1201, Councilman Shulman amends the Metro, card, Metro Code regarding animal control regulations. Councilman Shulman. President. Hang on, it won't. There we go. There okay. you go. Thank You're you, on. Madam President. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you. At the request of the uh, sponsor, it was recommended for a defer deferral indefinite. And it was four uh, in favor of, and zero against, and zero not voting. And I wanted to make a brief comment. I didn't get to make a comment last time. Well, let's let him open and then. Okay, because I didn't we'll go back to, to that. Okay, thanks, Bob. Right. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just a, um, I'll refer to Mr. Jameson. If you look at the analysis, um, this bill has a um, very high fiscal note. I believe it's about $500,000. Um, 
So uh, I think uh, the idea was to defer this indefinitely. Uh, obviously, we just passed a very tight budget. We don't have the money, the $500,000 for the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for additional people to work for animal control, even though I think we'd like to. We all love our pets. We want to bring them inside when it gets too hot. Uh, we want other people to bring their pets inside. Uh, but at this point, I think our animal control folks are overwhelmed. And the discussion with the Department of Health is that um, we need to step back and figure out a better way to do this and figure out what we can do in the future. So with that understanding, we're going to work with the Department of Health, try to come up with a better solution. So at this point, we need to move this, uh, move to defer this indefinitely. Thank you. There's a motion to defer indefinitely. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to say I appreciated um, Council Member Schulman uh, doing the indefinite deferral, realizing the fiscal note that was associated with it, and it might not be able to be funded. The second piece was, too, I wanted to make sure, um, and I have a dog named Poochie. We love Poochie. But just to make sure that we um, educate our, our residents as well, because I think everybody is maybe at a different point in terms of their interactions with um, animals. And we just want to make sure that we're not penalizing people that may not be aware or have the same standard, because depending on what community you're from, they might feel like they're treating their dog really good, and all of a sudden they have a fine, and they're in jail, and they're considered a bad person or whatever. But we just want to make sure that we do education, because I just think from community to community, some of us have different uh, interactions as it relates to animals. And I appreciate you, Council Member Schulman, though. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Council Member Schulman. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Council Lady Gilmore. Um, I think education is key. I think we need to keep doing that. And if we can work out something on this bill, I'll bring it back, and I'll name it after your dog, Poochie. All right? Thank you. <laughs> Council Lady Haywood. I would be uh, remiss if I didn't pay homage to my dog, which was major, and it might, she might, <laughs> he may have to, Name the bill Poochie Major or Major Poochie because our German Shepherd, and I, I really do understand that bill because our German Shepherd grew up with my daughter and someone in our neighborhood called the dog pound or what have you on our dog and they took him to the pound. My husband went over to pick him up on his lunch hour and took the dog to his mother's home because she lived close by. And we all gathered around and uh, went to pick him up from the mother, my mother-in-law's house. We had cake and everything for Major. Major was probably eight. But when we got there, he was out in the backyard, and he was dead from a heat stroke. And we were truly devastated. So I do understand this. I mean, and I will always be devastated. That's probably been 30 years ago. <laughs> So consider Poochie major, okay? Thank you so much for indulging me. Thank you. Councilman Swope. Call the question, please. <laughs> There's no one else in the queue. <laughs> Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to defer indefinitely passes. Substitute Bill BL 2018-1202, Councilman Elrod amends the Metro Code to regulate dockless bicycle and scooter operators and to establish a permitting system. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Hang on a minute. Councilman Potts. I'm sorry. <laughs> Councilman Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Traffic and parking, move to defer at one meeting, three, four, zero again. Thank you, Councilman Pridemore. Public safety, beer, and regulated beverages uh, voted for a one meeting deferral at the request of the sponsor, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommended a one meeting deferral, eight in favor, zero against. Now it's so moved with a brief explanation. Well, explanation. The floor is yours. Um, first of all, it's kind of funny that an ordinance about birds follows a, uh, an ordinance about dogs. Um, <laughs> free bird. <laughs> free bird. Um, this ordinance, uh, I'm sure many of y'all uh, are aware of this. this was, 
came about by one company, Bird in particular, that came to Nashville. But there are other companies that want to come to Nashville that want to offer dockless scooters, dockless bicycles, dockless electric bicycles to be offered um, not just to those that visit Nashville, but those that actually live here in Nashville. Um, and not just in downtown or West End, those parts of town, but um, all over. And this ordinance goes, um, I think, is largely in the form that it's, I'll be asking for a second reading to, uh, for you all to adopt on second reading in uh, two weeks. But uh, some downtown businesses want to get, have some more, um, uh, want to talk about the bill some more, so I'll asking for a one meeting uh, deferral. Uh, briefly, um, the bill does a lot of things. Um, first, um, it sets up the permitting process for these companies to operate in Nashville. Um, it sets out, I believe, some, some tough regulations on them, um, but also on um, how scooters and bicycles operate. Uh, principally, it uh, reinforces the prohibition on riding in on sidewalks and business districts. Um, we're doing some legal research and talking um, with the state about a 1902 law that may also um, prevent scooters on, on sidewalks. So I think we've um, done just about as much as we can in the law about riding, uh, riding or prohibiting the riding of them on um, bicycles and scooters on sidewalks. Um, but I, there's also requirements in the bill about the companies educating their users on where to operate them, how to operate them, and where they can park them. And I think that's uh, the biggest thing that we can do is to require these companies to educate their own users um, through their app, through a special website that's required in the bill, and through ongoing education. Uh, also, there is um, there have been many of these ordinances passed around the country, and to my knowledge, for the first time, there will be a enforcement mechanism of a $25 fine on anyone that um, improperly operates or parks uh, a scooter or bicycle. Um, these, uh, it's hopefully anticipated that this fine will be similar to a parking ticket, um, just like if a parking ticket, if um, if uh, grandmother allows her grandson to go down. And get, but he gets a parking ticket on his grandmother's car. The parking ticket goes to his grandmother, um, and she has to decide whether or not to make her grandson pay it. This will be something similar. The $25 fine will go on the scooter or bicycle that's operated or parked improperly. Um, and then the company, whether it's Bird or Lime or Spin or Ofo or others, have to, will have to pay that fine, and they will have to make the decision on whether or not to um, collect that from the user or just pay it out of pocket. So I think that will be an incentive to the companies to help educate their users, but also an incentive, uh, carrot or stick, however you want to put it, for, them, for people to operate them properly on the streets and not on sidewalks. Uh, something that's been important to me is to also um, to um, encourage uh, companies to have equitable access to this across Nashville. There's a prohibition on clustering them um, and uh, in parts of town. There's also, a, uh, once you reach a certain threshold, you have to go to uh, prom uh, prom areas that are designated as promise zones, and you have to have uh, a plan on um, other equitable access to it, such as um, potentially cash options and not having to have a smartphone. Um, so the bill does, uh, the ordinance does a lot of things. Um, we'll be bringing it back uh, in two weeks, and we'll be asking for your approval. So uh, with that, I move for a one-meeting deferral. There's been a one meeting deferral, properly moved and seconded. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I do uh, want to give tremendous credit to Councilman Elrod in both his role as Chair of Public Works, but I think also uh, looking at this policy seriously. Um, you know, we, I think many of us are aware that uh, this, this one particular company uh, came into town and had some issues, not just with the mayor's office, with other departments operating in a way that was unobtrusive to Nashvilleians as they attempted to live, work, and play in the city. I think, you know, every now and then policy considerations come up that really do impact uh, either one or a handful of districts more intensely. And I think, uh, you know, one thing I did not hear in, in Councilman Elrod's remarks is that this isn't just about downtown businesses. Frankly, this is about uh, the 10,000 people who live downtown, this is about uh, the people that live in Midtown. I have, you know, I've got basically a, a binder full of uh, responses from people that have had unfortunate incidents on sidewalks where it's not just, you know, they might trip over a, a, a let's say, 
indelicately placed scooter, this is where uh, these are electric assist vehicles. They operate at a fairly high speed, and when, if people are riding them in groups, which I have personally seen on multiple occasions, they can actually pose a risk to public safety and cause injury. We had, uh, within just days of their operating, uh, two people uh, struck and uh, very badly injured uh, in a car scooter incident, I think. Before we rush to a policy framework that allows these things, we have actually had a period of operation that we can draw public input from, and we have failed to do that. Uh, I know there were uh, a couple of moments of working groups assembled for this, but uh, we did not touch base with urban residents in any, mean, any meaningful way, with Gulch residents in any meaningful way. We did not touch base with downtown businesses or their employees in any meaningful way. Uh, and it is absolutely my intent that we create the space to do so and not only accept public input to address uh, concerns, but that we also accept suggestions and, yes, consider the possibility that uh, people in the general public might have ideas that work their ways into amendments. Uh, so I'm very grateful that we have a deferral on the table, and I, I support that deferral. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I support what Councilman Elrod is trying to do, but I don't think that he uh, did justice to the Tennessee law to which he referred. Um, it says, when any sidewalks are constructed, every person who rides or drives a horse team or other vehicle on the sidewalks, except for the purpose of crossing the sidewalks when necessary to do so, or who hitches any horse or other animal to any tree growing on or adjacent to such sidewalks, commits a Class C misdemeanor. That's just important to know. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Councilman Elrod. I'm also working on a dockless horse ordinance that will be coming in two meetings. <laughs> Thank you for that. We have um, one abstention, so we are going to just on the deferral. Okay. He's abstaining on the deferral. Okay. Thank you. You changed that. <laughs> it's okay. We have a motion for one meeting deferral. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1203, Councilman Rosenberg amends the Metro Code relating to scooters, inline skates, and roller skates by defining scooter and removing certain requirements. Councilman Rosenberg, I hope it's just as enlightening as the last one. Thank you, Madam President. I'm sure it will be. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilman Pridemore. Um, oh, it was approved by yours. Yes. I'm sorry. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommended a one meeting deferral after amending the substitute. Eight in favor, zero against. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move the housekeeping amendment, please. There's a motion to move the housekeeping amendment. Do we need to read that for anybody? Seeing no comment. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. You're back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Madam President. This is the little, bro uh, little brother of Councilman Elrod's uh, bill. Uh, much less exciting, probably more wholesome. Um, it, uh, the, the issue is between his bill and my bill, it ends up excluding personally owned motorized scooters. So uh, I'd like to move to defer one meeting, please. There's a motion to defer one meeting. Is there a second? Having been properly moved and seconded, Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I, you know, kind of take issue with it being a little brother. Could it not be a little sister? <laughs> really? I gave you five dollars. Having been properly moved and seconded with uh, comments from the peanut gallery over here. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1205, Councilman Glover, prohibits Metro from approving or otherwise entering into the sale, lease, transfer, or conveyance of property adjacent to the proposed Major League Soccer Stadium to any third party for purposes of private development. Councilman Glover. 
Committee reports, please. Thank you. Council Lady Bircher. Thank you, Madam President. At the request of a sponsor, Budget and Finance recommended an indefinite deferral, 11, 11 4 0 against. Thank you. Councilman Swope. Coast Fairs and Farmers Market met, and there were only two of us, so we did not have quorum. So I believe we deferred indefinitely by rule because we couldn't vote. Thank you. Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the Conventions, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee voted for and zero against a indefinitely deferral. Thank you. Councilman Glover. Thank you, uh, Madam President. And I am going to move for an indefinite deferral uh, simply because there's other committees that are going to do some work on this to, I think, really dig into it a little bit deeper, uh, which I think I, I applaud the committees for doing that because I think there's certain procedures that needed to be followed that have not been followed. Uh, and I've, I've made myself known. And on a side note, my wife sees exactly what's going on here. Y'all are trying to drag this out until midnight so we can all celebrate my birthday. She sent me a text, and we, we, we're on to what y'all are doing, okay? But anyway, with that, I move for indefinite deferral. There's a motion for indefinite deferral, been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1209, Council Lady Vercher and Roten grants the purchasing agent the authority to extend the term of the contract for the Centennial Park Master Plan Design and Engineering Services. Council Lady Vercher. Thank you, Madam President. That's 1209. You want committee report? Yes, committee report. I am the committee, right? No, yours has already approved it. Okay. <coughs> Councilman Roten. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Parks, Library, and Arts um, voted in favor 7 4, 1 grumpy against. Council Lady Vercher. Move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018 1246. Council Lady Bircher and Councilman Withers adopts the five-year consolidated plan and 2018 action plan for housing and community development and authorizes the mayor to submit the consolidated plan and 2018 action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Council Lady Bircher. Thank you, Madam President. Budget and Finance recommended a one-meeting deferral with a re-referral to Budget and Finance and a referral to the Affordable Housing Committee, 1140 against on any committee reports. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. The uh, Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee uh, met this afternoon and considered this ordinance, and uh, our committee voted uh, to recommend approval, five in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady Vercher. And I move for uh, one meeting deferral. And a re-referral to budget and, re and finance. Correct, re-referral to budget and finance and, and a referral to yeah. um, the affordable housing. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1247, Council Members Henderson, Rosenberg, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain rights of way easements drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of Old Hickory Boulevard sidewalk improvements. Councilman Rosenberg. Councilman Bedney. Uh, I move for approval. Uh, actually, I, uh, I want committee reports. And Thank I, you. I happen to be holding the microphone so I can... Uh, Go ahead and give me yours. So it was uh, outstandingly approved by the committee 12 for 0 against. Thank you. Council Lady Vercher. Thank you, Madam President. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 11 4 0 against. Councilman Bednick. Move to approve, please. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Oh, I got it. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Council Member Councilman Elrod. Elrod. I apologize. I was going to leave you out. Sorry about that. It was wonderfully approved, 8 in favor, 0 against. Having been now properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1248, Council Lady Haywood, Bircher, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of Vail View Drive sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Haywood. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I call for committee reports, please. Council Lady Bircher. Thank you, Madam President. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 11-4-0 against. Council for Councilman Bednay. The Planning uh, Historical uh, Committee recommended approval, 12-4-0 against. Councilman Elrod. Five works recommend approval, eight in favor, zero against. Council Lady Haywood. I move for approval. <laughs> Thank you. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1249, Councilman Bednay and Elrod abandons existing sewer main and easements and to accept new sewer and water mains, sanitary manholes, a fire hydrant and easements for properties located at 685 and 693 Vernon Avenue. Councilman Bednay. Committee report. You want to give yours? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, uh, the committee that I uh, chaired recommended approval 1240 against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend approval in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman Bedney. Uh, I move to approve. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1250, Council Members Kendall Bedney Elrod abandons a portion of 25th Avenue North right of way. Councilman Bedney. Committee report. Councilman uh, Elrod. Public works recommend approval in favor, zero against. Councilman Hager. Uh, parking and traffic pass three four zero against. Thank you, Councilman Bedney. The committee recommended approval twelve four zero again, and I move to approve. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1251, Council Members Kendall, Bedney, and Elrod abandons a portion of alley number 931 right-of-way. Councilman Bedney. Yes, come here report, please. Councilman Elrod. But works recommend approval. In favor, zero against. Councilman Hager. Having parking pass this bill, 340 against. Councilman Bedney. Planning recommended approval, 1240 again, and I move to approve the legislation. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1252, Council Members Swayzo, Bedney, and Elrod changes the name of a portion of McGavick Pike to Knight Valley Drive. Councilman Bedney. Um, committee report, please. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend approval. In favor, zero against? Councilman Hager. And parking approves this, three, four, zero against. Councilman Bedney. Uh, I just want to clarify, I wasn't any of them. I was just uh, doing a public service, and the committee recommended approval 1240 against, and I moved to approve. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. We're now on bills on third reading, BL 2018 1099. Councilman Scott Davis. Who's doing this one? This one's uh, deferred by rule. BL 2018-1198, Council Members Bircher and O'Connell approves a partnership agreement between the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund and Metro Government pertaining to the support of financial empowerment centers. Council Lady Bircher. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam President. I move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1199, Council Members O'Connell, Gilmore, and others amends the Metro Code to dissolve the Metro Homelessness Commission, repeals Ordinance Number BL 2005-582, Ordinance Number BL 2011-917, and Ordinance Number BL 2014-777, and creates a Nashville-Davidson County Continuum of Care Homelessness Planning Council. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval of the brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, I know uh, as we were concluding for discussion on second reading, Councilman Bedney uh, raised some concerns. I've spoken with him and I've left on uh, all of our colleagues' desks some uh, correspondence between uh, Metro Legal and the HUD field office that uh, deals with um, our local implementation of the HEARTH Act. Uh, so. I, you know, I don't think in some ways there is a way to probably fully address all of the concerns uh, that uh, the individual who 
uh, contacting Councilman Benet raised, but I think um, based on a local uh, continuum of care meeting that had HUD representation, uh, we've we've basically done all that we can in, in moving in this direction. I think if there are technical corrections that are necessary, uh, if for some reason HUD disagrees with both um, our Metro legal opinion as, as well as their own local field office's legal opinion, then I think we can address those in short order. And I think it will be very clear if we need to do more than just technical corrections after this. But I, I will say personally from the, the several years that we've spent working on digesting the focus strategies report that Will Connolly did all the way through this with HUD's technical assistance uh, with us right there, uh, kind of guiding this process that this is going to be something that is transformative for delivery of homelessness services in Nashville uh, after we pass this. So I would uh, like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, I would like to recognize uh, Director of Homelessness Commission, uh, Ms. Judith Stackett, and also MDHA, uh, Angie Habit, and also legal uh, representative, uh, Kwan. <laughs> I'm sorry. So they have been uh, so committed to pass this ordinance. So we have had uh, lots of meetings and continuum of care uh, a meeting. We literally walked over two years. And there was one uh, uh, disapproval vote, but 29, many, 99% of the continuum of care non-profit organization is in support. And everybody is really committed to eliminate our homeless. So we would like uh, your support to moving us forward and you know have meaningful and collaboratively address to eliminate homeless from uh, this city and county. And I really appreciate your support. And would like to thank you, uh, hardworking, uh, of, uh, you know, our fellow uh, council member and co-sponsors, and especially our council member, uh, Freddie O'Connell, for you know, years of support and dedication. Thank you. Councilman Pulley. Just very briefly, thanks, uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Just wanted to thank uh, members of the community who uh, weighed in on this, and uh, particularly thank Councilman O'Connell for all of the hard work he's uh, done to address a lot of the things that were brought up and concerns that were uh, uh, brought up about this bill. So with that, I heartily support this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, Councilman O'Connell. Just like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1204 is amended. Council members Allen, Sledge, and others requires the Metro Department of Codes Administration to publish an ongoing compilation of the number and type of demolition permits issued for residential property during the preceding calendar quarter, the number and type of residential building permits issued for residential property during the preceding calendar quarter, and the number and type of residential occupancy permits issued for residential property during the preceding calendar quarter by Metro Government. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. The, f the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Just want to um, point out this is uh, what has been dubbed the housing scorecard. It's part of a pair of, um, of regulations. One, one was a, a resolution that um, asked for a document at the beginning of each year that would sort of give us a status report on where we are with regard to uh, trying to provide the number of affordable housing units that are needed uh, to, to meet the current need. And with this, uh, the codes department already has all this information available and this simply formalizes that it would always be available so that uh, the information will be available to keep track as we move through the year of if we're making progress on adding more units or for losing units. So um, the housing advocates um, have asked for a measurable way to, to measure our progress and this is, this is an important piece of that. So with that, I renew my motion for approval. Thank you. Seeing no one in the queue and having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1208, Council Members Withers, Elrod, and O'Connell approves three license agreements between Metro Government and Verizon Wireless to install in-building radio distribution devices to enhance wireless reception on or within the historic courthouse, the Justice A.A. Birch Building, and the Nashville Public Library. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. With all committee reports being in, I would like to move approval. 
having been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1210. Council Lady Van Rees, Vircher, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of the Dickerson Pike sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Van Rees. With all committee reports and after three years, sidewalks on Dickerson Pike, I ask for your approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed, motion passes, BL 2018-1211. Council members Withers, Furcher, and Elrod authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of the Eastland Avenue sidewalk improvements. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam President. With all committee reports being in, I would like to move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes, BL 2018-1212. Council members Vircher, Bednay, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of the Linbar Drive sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Madam President. I move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1213, Council Lady Blaylock, Vircher, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of the Tusculum Road sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Blaylock. Thank you. What a way to end the night with all these sidewalks. I move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1214. Council members Vircher, Bedney, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for use in public projects for purposes of the Brick Church Pike sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Madam President. I move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1215, Council Members Vircher, Bedney, and others authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to execute a quit claim deed for property interests Metro may have of the right-of-way adjacent to 610 McGavick Pike. Council Lady Vircher. Move for approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1216. Council members O'Connell, Bircher, and others approves an agreement between Metro Government and Capital View Joint Venture concerning the construction of public park improvements and the donation of a parcel of property. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval, please. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1217, Council Members O'Connell, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes Ryman Hospitality Properties, Inc. to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 300 Broadway. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1218, Council Members Sledge, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes City View 1 LLC to install, construct, and maintain an underground encroachment in the right-of-way located at 2305 Klein Avenue. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam President. I move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1219, Council Members O'Connell, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes LC Sobro LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 706, 713, 717, 721, and 723 Second Avenue South. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1220. Council members O'Connell, Bedney, and Elrod authorizes LC Sobro LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 702, 706, 710, 716, and 718 Third Avenue South. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1221. Council members Roten, Bedney, and Elrod abandons existing sanitary sewer main and easement to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, fire hydrant sanitary sewer manholes and easements for six properties located on Lebanon Pike and Walcott Drive. Councilman Roten. Approval. 
Having been properly Move moved and again. seconded. Yeah, I heard it. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1222, council members wrote in Bednay and Elrod, abandons existing water main and easements into accept new water mains, fire hydrants, and easements for seven properties located on Hockett Ford Road. Move approval again. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1223, council members Kendall, Bednay, and Elrod, abandons existing water main and easement and to accept new water main, a fire hydrant, and any easement for properties located at 3208 Long Boulevard and 203 Burns Avenue. Council member Bednay. I move to approve, please. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1224, council members Bednay and Elrod, abandons existing easement rights and removed abandoned pipe on properties located at 330 Cartwright Street and East Cedar Street unnumbered. Councilman Bednay. Yeah, uh, I would like to move to approve, please. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. BL 2018-1225. Council members O'Connell, Bethany, and Elrod abandons portions of alley number 9235 right of way. Council member O'Connell. Well, I would like to move approval of the brief comment. The, uh, the next two hours and 32 minutes are really going to require a lot of yielding of time on the part of my colleagues, but I think on behalf of Councilman Glover, we can do this. So um, I've really got a lot to say about this particular GIS uh, update. I think it's probably going to be one of the most important uh, alley center, center line layers that we process in this. I move approval. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe, point of order, I don't believe Councilman Rosenberg is allowed to do that, but I will move approval. Well, we have others in the queue. Councilman Elrod. I yield my time to Councilman O'Connell. Councilman Swope. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. Call the question. <laughs> We've got one more in the queue. I'm going to let her speak. <laughs> Council Lady Dow. I was just calling previous questions. So we can move on. <laughs> okay, fine. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, don't go so fast. Council Lady Hurd has an announcement. Thank you very much. I just wanted to rise and thank Councilwoman Gilmore and Councilwoman Lee for coming out this past weekend to celebrate and honor the Delta Sigma Theta sorority who had the Southern Region Conference. It was the largest conference that the sorority has ever held. There were 4,500 sorority sisters registered. And I also wanted to congratulate the National Metropolitan Alumni Chapter on their 45th anniversary and for winning three awards. And I wanted to congratulate Nashville Alumni Chapter along with NMAC for hosting such a wonderful event and all of the sorrows that came out to support and made it a fabulous opportunity for Nashville to show that it truly is the it city. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Oh, wait. Council Lady Berger. <laughs> they just turned it off. <laughs> I apologize. I called on her and it just went off. My microphone's working. You're welcome to come up and use it. Oops. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We're out of here. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.